Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Hoppington Board of Selectmen for Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. Prior to the public session, the board met in executive session to approve minutes, um, executive session minutes, and to consider litigation strategy with respect to a petition of Eversource Energy for zoning exemptions, DPU, and to consider the purchase, sale, lease, or value of real property in relation to open space preservation, center trail, town hall, main street quarter project, because uh, the chair declares that discussion in an open session may have a detrimental effect on the litigating or negotiating position of the board. And now we will open our public session and we will begin with our call to order and I would like to ask our scouts who are here to please come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Jack and company, if you please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will start with our public forum first. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. If there's anyone who'd like to speak, please come forward. Mr. Kilduff. I have no opinions. <laughs> at least not at the moment. <laughs> you're, you're known for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's uh, something special coming up on Monday, and there are uh, people who spend uh, a tremendous amount of their time and energy getting ready to, to run. Uh, we're privileged to have a member of the Board of Selectmen who's going to be running his 30th marathon, uh, which is a big deal. Uh, we also in Hopkinton. Big deal. Yeah, which <laughs> one's a big deal? Thirty is Wait terrific. I didn't I didn't that. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under the radar. We also uh, do some work for uh, WBZ's uh, marathon coverage, and uh, we have thirty. No, excuse me, forty uh, high school students from Hopkinton who will be positioned along the course that uh, send messages back that actually get used on the telecast. Um, but I'm probably not going to see them, uh, so I thought I'd take just two minutes. Um, this is a jacket that this, these uh, young people will be wearing on the course um, on Monday. Uh, I'm not so sure it's water repellent. Uh, maybe we don't need it, but uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to present one to uh, Brian Herr in Absolutely. honor of his 30th marathon. Thank you, Tim. That's it. Yeah. Very nice. I think it's going to be raining on Monday. So it was. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Tim. That's great. Oh, I thought it was mine. Thank you very much. That's great, Tim. And now um, we have a proclamation. Tonight the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a proclamation for Eagle Scout Jack Brennan of Hopkinton Boy Scout Troop 4. Jack, come on up. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Eagle Scout Award is Scouting's highest award, and it is achieved after many years of going all through the various uh, ranks, uh, including uh, an outstanding Eagle Scout project and the many badges. And from all that I have learned about the Eagle Scout Award, there's a lot more that it speaks to than just the badges and the project. It, it speaks to the young man and who he has become and what he's learned along the way. It doesn't happen very often. Only about 4% actually achieve this award. So um, we're really honored and pleased to have Jack here tonight to tell us about his Eagle Scout project and award. Jack, welcome. Thank you. Tell us about your project and tell us about your journey. Okay, so my Eagle Scout project was 
um, I built a brick prayer patio at my church, um, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Westboro, Massachusetts, and um, took a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, and um, in the end it came out really well, and there was a baby baptized on it um, uh, in October of 2017. So Excellent. And so you've been in scouting for how long? Uh, this is my 12th year of scouting. And how many badges have you got there? Uh, merit badges? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> right, 21. <laughs> A lot. And I assume that you didn't do this project all by yourself. Part yeah. of it is, is it costs something and you have to have some help. So tell us about that. I did. I had um, quite a bit of help. I was very grateful for um, all the help. There's 23 volunteers in, sto in total, and that was people from the church, um, a lot of scouts, scout parents, scout masters, and uh, different volunteers from the community. Did you have some setbacks? Yes, we had some setbacks. Uh, <laughs> um, there, there weren't too many. Um, nothing too bad. At one point we thought the ground wasn't level enough and we weren't sure how to get it more level and so um, we had someone come and look at it and they said it looked fine so we were good but um, we had plenty of bricks and which I'm very grateful for. They were donated by um, Your Space Landscaping which is out of Burlington mm -hmm. um, and we had plenty of materials. Um, the mm -hmm. McIntyre loam donated um, quite a bit of it so I'd like to thank Mr. Um, Mr. Palmer and also Mr. McIntyre who unfortunately isn't here with us anymore but he um, donated to many Eagle Scout projects before mine. Well I had the privilege of being at Jack's Eagle Scout Court of Honor so um, I got the inside track on all the great stuff Jack has done, but the rest of the members of the board perhaps have some questions or some things they'd like to say to Jack because they haven't had the chance either. I'll go first. So, hi Jack. Well, Thanks for coming up and uh, congratulations. You. It's not a surprise for me personally to see you here. Um, getting an Eagle Scout. Uh, I've known you since you were just a little fella. Uh, to me, you are still a little fella. <coughs> um, and to know, to know your family, your mom and your dad, as I do, uh, this is just kind of something that you'll do. It's just kind of, you're driven, you're, you're, they give you some great guidance, they give you some great morals and some great values, yeah. and you as a great person took them and built built on him and ran. So <clears throat> it's not a surprise at all to see here. It makes me very proud to be able to sit on this side of the, the desk and, and say congratulations to you. Um, I've said congratulations to a lot of Eagle Scouts. I haven't known them personally. I haven't known their families personally. This means a lot more to me than most. So congratulations from the bottom of my heart. You did a great job, and your parents are certainly gleaming with pride. Thank you very much, Mr. Stitson. Should I go? Please. So, um, get that down. Uh, Jack, welcome and congratulations. This is great. What year are you in school now? I'm a senior. You're a senior. So I'm pretty sure I remember Jack playing soccer on the field 10. Is it behind on Loop Road there, the one in the back? Uh, when they had the fields were about as big as this room, and the kids would run up and down and kick the soccer ball three fields over and stuff like that. And I think Jack was out there doing that quite a bit. Um, so you've come a long way growing up uh, here in Hopkinton. And uh, I think you're taller than your mother and your father now, probably. Yeah. Um, so good for you. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, you know, the chair mentioned a lot of things about becoming an Eagle Scout and what, what, what it says about you as a person today. And I think one of the biggest things, I would just add to what she said, what it's going to say about you in the future. And achieving this Eagle Scout honor now is something that you'll carry with you for a long, long time. In fact, throughout your entire life. And uh, you'll use it on resumes for colleges, you'll use it on resumes for jobs, you'll use it on resumes when you're looking to find a, a, a partner for life, who knows? Uh, you know, the, the, the way the Eagle Scout goes with you uh, is amazing. And uh, someone that interviews people and hires people for work and things like that and all kinds of other organizations, uh, when someone has an Eagle Scout, it jumps out at you right away. When they have that, when they have that award, it really jumps out. 
So uh, I think it's great that you've done this. I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised based on your family and your upbringing and all the activities you've done here in Hopkinton over the years. And uh, I think it's a great tribute not only to yourself and your family, but to the town, and, and we really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we're honored to have you here. This is a really cool part of our job. We do this a lot. And uh, I'm amazed. I think we're doing more now than we did it 10 years ago, too, by the way. There's more kids uh, working harder in Hopkinton to make this happen, and, and that goes to the leadership in the community as well in the Scouts. So good for you, and congratulations, and get ready to write that down everywhere you go because people will always be impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations, Jack. And it's, 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 uh, it's an honor to have you here with us because um, to uh, what Mr. Ho was saying, that this is something that, that you're going to have for the rest of your life because of what you just did. People will look at you differently for the rest of your life when they, when they know they're, you're an Eagle Scout. Um, and it's a testament to your parents. Your, your mother's worked hard to make so many Eagle Scouts. Now, um, the chair was saying that 4% of, of Scouts worldwide become Eagle Scouts. It's got to be a heck of a lot higher than that in Hopkinton. We do this every week. Like and we should, we should almost make this like the second spot in our agenda yeah. next to Eagle Scout. Or Eagle Scout, just leave a blank and fill in the blank. It's, 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 a, it's an honor to be, to, to be with so many Eagle Scouts. It's so great. Um, because, it, you know, it, it's, it's an honor to your family, to yourself, to the town, and, and to everybody that made you. So, so to, your, to your parents, thank you very much. To the Scout Masters, thank you. And to you, thank you very much for for being a leader, a leader in the youth of today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Katina. This was a congratulations. You know, it is an honor. And it's, uh, I mean, you've heard all the accolades already from this board, and I echo all of that. But I think, I think even more importantly, it shows what, as a community, what we're able to bring about, that we're able to foster young children, to bring them into positions of leadership, and put you out there into the world with all these skills, and these are going to stay with you. So um, congratulations, and congratulations to the entire community for, uh, for being able to produce such wonderful, accomplished young adults. Well, the apple certainly doesn't fall far from the tree, and everyone said that, and you had a lot of outstanding people behind you who are literally behind you today. Uh, your outstanding parents, Kim and Tim Brennan, and uh, Kim's the one that actually went on the, all the 50-mile hikes. Uh, and your, your uh, leader, uh, Mr. Peters, and I know the Greystones are there who contributed so much to scouting, and your, your grandmother, uh, Jane Moran, but we also know at the end of the day that these people don't make an Eagle Scout. The Eagle Scout becomes an Eagle Scout. It doesn't, not everyone gets there. You have to have that determination and uh, have that character. And Jack told wonderful stories at his Court of Honor ceremony. Some of the stuff was hilarious for where he's come, including starting out as a six-year-old, who he described the six-year-old as high energy, low focus. <laughs> but look where you are, and we just couldn't be prouder. And so we're delighted tonight to have you here and to have a proclamation for, from the Board of Selectmen. And I'd like you and uh, your, your family and Mr. Peters to come up. We'd love to present it to you and have a, have a photograph. Let's, let's go here by the table. <laughs> Just put that thing out of the way. Okay, well, you know what I'm doing after the break. Sure.
I show up in here. was the best part of meeting. No, it's even better. <laughs> okay. Um, next is the very exciting consent agenda. Um, but the one, here's one piece that's kind of exciting here. Um, item one of the board minutes. The board of selectmen will consider approving the March 19, 2019 board of selectmen minutes. Item two, marathon fund gifts. The board of selectmen will consider accepting marathon fund gifts for the Friends of Hoppington for $1,341.36 for the purchase of 100 volunteer t-shirts for Hoppington Family Day on September, 20, uh, September 14, 2019 from Pro Logo Design for $617.50 and renting four regular and two handicapped accessible portable restrooms from United site services for $723.86 and this is the exciting one parade permit for the Boston Marathon Monday April 15 2019 the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a parade permit for the 123rd running of the Boston Marathon on Monday April 15 2019 the VA is requesting permission to control and use the roadway and adjacent sidewalks to conduct the race in a safe and controlled manner this includes permission to deliver and install course signage hydration stations, portable toilets, medical stations, timing mats, mile markers, and other equipment. And finally, item four, trail coordination and management committee appointments. The Board of Selectmen will make the following appointments to the trail coordination and management committee. A, Parks and Rec Commission nominee Dan Terry, term expired June 30, 2020. B, Planning Board nominee Dave Paul, term expiring June 30, 2019. And Conservation Commission nominee Jim Cirello, term expires June 30, 2021. Um, would someone like to pull out some of these for individual discussion? Four, please. Mr. Herr would like item four. Okay. And I'll pull out three. Okay. And Mr. Patino, item three. Okay, then I would request a motion to approve items two and three, uh, board minutes and marathon fund gifts. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Item three, Mr. Catino, the marathon. Should we, should we permit this, do you think? Do you think we should do I, this? You know, I, 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 I think so. I, think so. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I just want to you know, thank the board. Mine was canceled personally. <laughs> I think there's someone here from the marathon. Would you like to come up? Yeah, absolutely. Tell us about this. We've never heard it before. Well, so, um, so good evening. Lauren Persian from the BAA. I'm the new director of operations um, with the race being on Monday. I hope this goes well um, and we get approved. If you uh, <laughs> but very similar to years past, our, our timeline in the village, our installation times and our execution of departure times are going to remain very much the same as they have in years past. 
we are working with um, Hopkinton High and Middle School to look at our installation plans so we're mindful of the fields and the damage that could be coming up with the impending rain. And we have been working very closely with both the Department of Public Works and the um, Boss, uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Public Works and the Police Department to look at our road reopening plan. So many of the items that came up last year as issues we've been working for the past year to make sure that we're leaving the, in the same state that we found it. Um, so we've done several things on the back end that you perhaps would not notice, the runners may not notice, um, but we are working in, uh, very hard to make sure that we are staying good partners to the town of Hopkinton. Um, so any questions, I am here to field them. The timeline uh, for the day, the military marchers will start at 6 a.m., similar <coughs> to the, how they have in years past, with the Wave 4 leaving at 11.15. What you may notice is that there's no early um, athletes with disabilities Ability start. We are working them into the actual waves themselves. It's a program that we've discussed in length with our athletes with disabilities and really looking to um, highlight our para athletic departments. Yeah, so we're very, very excited about it. Um, we're hoping for some. We're expecting the worst. So we're, we're ready. And any questions? Excellent. Well, I, I wanted to pull it out because I, I, I wanted to, to um, thank my. Um, my uh, fellow members of the board for um, appointing me to be the um, liaison, special liaison to the BAA and the marathon because it really is an honor to be working with the, the BAA on the staff. You know, they're, they're so proactive, just like was just mentioned, I was going to bring that up, the, with, the, uh, with the schools and the fields and, and, and with the police and the closures. They're on top of it even before we are and that's the kind of partner that, that we, we love to have. And um, you know, and, and to be working with us um, yesterday with the event yesterday with the blue lines, and it's just it it really has been a pleasure uh, uh, again this year to to do it. And I just wanted to point that out. And I really had no other questions or anything because I know they're on top of it. Yeah. I will say one new thing you kind of mentioned and alluded to is we are doing the blue line in Hopkinton this year, which we're very excited. We've worked very closely with John on, so we're happy to lay that down. Hope it doesn't get washed away. Um, but that is that is the intention for a, a new tradition in Hopkinton. So we're excited to, to start that this year with John. Thank you. Right. Mr. Herr? What is the weather for Monday right now? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to tell you the truth or yeah. do you want to idea? Um, so the weather actually has been steadily improving over the last four days. We have our we have daily updates with the National Weather Society as starting as of today and we'll be meeting with them in person on Thursday. We are looking for a similar weather as in last year, but slightly warmer. I know, I'm sorry. I know you're running, so I don't want to, it's going to be beautiful. Um, but we are looking for a, a very similar weather, weather pattern to last year. However, the weather model is changing a little bit, so it looks like it's moving earlier into Sunday evening and will be stopping in, on Monday a little bit sooner. So wave three and four may have a better day than one and two. I'm not sure where you're seated. Who's one of the elite? Yeah, I'm wave five. Oh, the special wave, yeah. yeah. Um, no, so we, we are not making any um, drastic changes until Thursday. That really is our weather call. We are bringing heat into our athletes' um, tents around the town for sure to make sure that our programs are supported. Um, but until, as of right now, all systems go with the weather reports. Mm -hmm. Sure. Could be worse. I got 18 inches of snow last night at my camp. So, rain's not too bad. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Just don't wear that WBZ jacket. That's not waterproof. <laughs> yeah, I can check that out when I sat down. <laughs> Well, we're looking forward as usual, and um, I just want to mention, as Mr. Catino mentioned, all the good things that VA does working with the town, and particularly the donation of those charity bibs, which do so much Fantastic. for our community. It just spreads that good far and wide. And also, uh, it just occurred to me, hearing you talk, this is the 123rd, but how every year you're keeping it fresh. You learn new things, you're making changes, Every year you accommodate learning from the previous experience Absolutely. to make sure that it's just the most perfectly coordinated. I'm sure you know all the things that nobody else sees, but, but you work so hard every year. It never, it never gets routine. You're always on top of it, and that really makes such a difference. So. Well, we're always welcome to suggestions, so it's never a, a one-way conversation by all means. If there's anything that we learn, it's to continuously talk throughout the course of the year. So. 
I'll give you my card afterwards. Just John knows how to get it. I have, I have all the, yeah, I've got quick dials. So I need that stuff. What are your requests for weather? You messed up I, last I year. I know. Weather. I'm aware. So, Madam Chair, with that, I would uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the parade permit for the 123rd running of the Boston Marathon on Monday, April 15, 2019. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. So that is your news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a public hearing that is posted for 7 o'clock. So um, for the entertainment license for youth and family services. So I would like to just announce and open that and then um, are there any of the people that are here for the trail coordination appointments? No. Okay. Then no, we the, can. Well, I'm just make, I'll just make, no, no, the trail coordination appointments. Oh, that's why you pulled it out. A couple okay. others are behind on, but we can wait on those. Um, they're all members of those committees. Yeah, they're all members. Okay, let me, let me just open the hearing, and then let's just go back and do the appointments and be through the consent agenda. Is that mm -hmm. acceptable? Yes. All right, I would entertain a motion to open the post public hearing, Entertainment License, Youth and Family Services. The Board of Selectmen will hold a posted public hearing relative to an entertainment license application from Colleen Souza on behalf of Youth and Family Services, Hopkinton Organization for Prevention, HOP, for a celebration of recovery community event. Proposed event will celebrate individuals and families who support and and or are connected to substance addiction recovery and will be held on Saturday, May 4, 2019 from 12 noon to 4 p.m. on the Town Common, weather permitting. <laughs> Proposed entertainment will include a bouncy house for children, live bands, music and amplification systems for guest speakers on addiction recovery. Expected number of attendees may exceed 100. Is there a motion to open the public hearing, please? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Okay, your call. Yes. If you will allow us to hold one minute, I would like to just finish these four appointments, three appointments, and then we'll get to you. Um, the last item on the consent was the trail coordination management, and Mr. Herr, you wanted to speak to that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Kamala, when we gave direction, or we, we encouraged uh, our colleagues in Parks and Rec and Planning and Conservation to make an appointment did we require that it be a member of their board or just an appointment by their board recommendation, recommendation by the board and I think the charge is pretty clear that uh, the recommended member does not necessarily have to be an active member of the committee so I watched one member. of the meetings where that took place with one of the other boards and it sure seemed to me like their, their understanding was they had to appoint one of them and uh, I don't have a, I think the appointments are great but I don't think that that's the charge of the committee, and I, it's always good to get other people involved too. But I was just surprised when I watched that one deliberation how it had to be one of them. It's and maybe the direction wasn't very clear as to it could be whomever they wanted. But it's printed in black and white in the charge. You have to read. You have to read it. It was in the charge. Just so. So, Ms. Lazarus, am I confused in what I'm talking about? I think it's understood, and at least for Conservation Commission and Planning Board, they've appointed a member perhaps temporarily until someone else can be found. So and with the understanding that the other group, um, the people already appointed have begun meeting, so they needed somebody right away. They still would like to have interested people respond. Yeah, I think uh, the reason I'm harping on a little bit is the Trails Committee newly formed. The goal is to get as many people involved as possible, not sort of the, the typical individuals. Anyway, I'm all set. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the three uh, nominees for this evening, Dan Terry, David Paul, and Jim Cirillo, to the Trails Coordination and Management Committee. Second. And, and to that, by the way, I noticed that Mr. Paul's appointment expires in, in June this year, so <laughs> that's when we'll be, re, we'll be reappointing fairly soon anyway. Okay, that has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Thank you. Can I ask one question in kind of in regards to that? Please. What's the status right now of the trails? Uh, is there not a moratorium on the uh, on trails being built until this whole thing is put together? And Aren't they not supposed to be building trails right now? 
until they get everything squared away, organized? I don't believe there's a moratorium. Okay. Yeah. So they can go status quo. Keep going. I'm assuming you're referring to construction of trails by other entities in town. Sure. Okay. But. Yeah. Following hang in there. <laughs> but now that this committee is appointed, this committee can get going, and this committee can start to coordinate and manage these trails and these development processes as well. Correct. Correct. So we want to encourage our colleagues to let's get mm -hmm. on, right? All right, that motion has been approved. So now we can get back to Colleen. So welcome and tell us a little bit about your event that's going to be coming up uh, in a couple weeks in May. Thank you. So um, First as you had said, my name is Colleen Souza, and I'm a social worker in, under the Youth and Family Service Department here for the town of Hopkinton. And um, this event is through, we have a Hopkinton Organizing for Prevention group, which helps, it's a community-wide collaboration in preventing substance use and abuse within the community for youth and family. So out of this, we would like to do this celebration of recovery and have an event to help reduce the stigma for people who are um, recovering from addiction and addiction in general and to help educate the youth and the families in the community. So. We are looking for an entertainment license because we'd like to have this be an event, a substance-free event during the day where families can come. It can be a support for both families who have someone in recovery as well as people in recovery themselves. And um, we would love to have an education section. We are hoping to have different treatment um, facilities, education resources on all different places in Metro West, maybe even a little bit of a wellness um, section as well, things, making healthy choices. But the um, entertainment license is we would love to have music and speakers with amplification. And then um, food, we, we are hoping to have food trucks there as well. And we have water that can be donated if this is, moves forward. So is HOP an independent private group or is this part of the town, part of our Youth and Family Services? So it's under Youth and Family Services. It's a coalition, but it's a grant funded. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it's, it was started by Denise Hildreth. Right, yeah. Yep. It's under the town. Who okay. was, yep, in Youth and Family Services at the time. Mm -hmm. Questions? I was just questioning, um, because I think it sounds like a great event. First one, right? Haven't First one, before. yes. Um, there was not a request for a fee waiver. I know you're looking at exceeding, possibly exceeding 100. So if this is sort of a town sponsored, wouldn't that be an appropriate thing for us to, to do? To waive that. Absolutely. <laughs> Ms. Kamala, you look like there's you, something coming you, there. You need a fee? Um, there's a possible $25 fee. Yeah. The application will reflect that uh, the department is asking for a fee waiver. Okay. okay. It wasn't on the application, but I thought it, it probably will be. should have been. Yeah. <laughs> it should have been. Yeah. It will for next year, though, I guess. Oh, great. <laughs> so, um, if there are not further questions, then I would entertain a motion. Nope. No? It's public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course. Public hearing. Public. Here to be heard. Perfect. Now. Okay. Now. Madam Chair, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. All those in favor of closing the public hearing. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. And now I would entertain a motion to approve an entertainment license for youth and family services um, from Colleen on behalf. Uh, well. So moved. Uh, and all, to include. Okay. I'm Request a motion to approve an entertainment license for Youth and Family Services for Hoppington Organizing for Prevention for a Celebration of Recovery event on May 4th, 2019 on the Town Common to include a waiver of the $25 application fee. So moved. And a second. All right. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Post that is unanimous. Thank you, Colleen. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for doing this. Very exciting. Thank you. This sounds great. Ah, 
Staff appointments, I think we can squeeze these in. We have another public hearing starting at 7.15, but um, the Board of Selectmen will consider affirming the appointment of Ashley Shaheen, Assistant Director of Senior Services, Lisa Dion, Outreach Worker, John Gelsich, Principal Planner, and Don Alcott, Youth and Family Services Director. So I know John is here. Who else is here? Everyone. Well, yeah. everyone is here. And in fact, with your permission, um, Chairman, may we start with Don Alcott? Okay. It's very well with the last subject, man. Don, come on up. Well, glad to have you. Don is our new Youth and Family Services Director. Welcome. Thank you. Usually, Mr. Kamala now ends up um, giving them the most glowing introductions. Uh, He's wonderful when it comes to this. <laughs> Mr. Kamala, would you like to introduce Don? <laughs> yes, through the chair. Yes. Don Alcott will be replacing Denise Hildreth as the Youth and Family Services Director. Uh, she is a licensed independent clinical social worker, also licensed as advanced certification for the treatment of children, adolescents, and families. She is joining the town after spending uh, just over 20 years uh, with one of our sister communities. And she also worked for uh, Caritas Southwood Hospital Center for Behavioral Medicine, uh, Bridgewater State Hospital, Life Care Center, Lighthouse Counseling, HESCO Elder Services, as well as the Department of Social Services. Here's what we heard about Dawn from uh, our references, or her references. Everyone we spoke to uh, spoke highly of how you built the Medfield Youth and Family Services pro Program from the ground up. And this is exactly the same process that we have embarked on here in Hopkinton. They talked about your ex expertise uh, being appreciated by so many people in the community. Your clinician skills is outstanding, and your clinician techniques is best at all times for your clients. You relate very well to all members of the community and every individual that you meet with. Um, you have the ability to perform very well under pressure, keeping a cool head. Our interview process had two rounds, uh, and again, as I've always done in past uh, introductions, I want to thank the HR office uh, for coordinating the interview process. Dawn, welcome to the town. Thank you. Thank you. That's an outstanding recommendation, and. Uh, you know, we're a growing town, and when, before Denise left, she was always speaking about the increased need for services and the, the growth of the town, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're really grateful to have you. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here. The interview process was just really wonderful, and um, just the commitment of the community to human services shined brightly, and what a special night to be here and, and to see a young person honored, know. you know, right at the beginning of the meeting, and... Um, to also be here and hear Colleen present about an event in May, so it's great. Great. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Do you want to do these one at a time? Mm -hmm. I think, oh, yes. And so why don't we, because we'll do these one at a time, um, I would request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Donnie Alcott as Youth and Family Service. Can we thank director. you for some accolades? I'm before? sorry. Would Rather than like just have a walk away. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we, can, we can get right through it so he can leave so by time. It's still nice to thank you. Welcome to Hopkinton, Doc. Welcome to Hopkinton. <laughs> we're, we're a marathon town. We're, we're slow and steady. Get your steps in at our meetings. 
No, I, I just, I really, I just wanted to to, to mm -hmm. say what a, uh, you know, this it's a very important and very visible position here in Hopkinton, and and over the years we've been blessed to have uh, great appointees, and and I remember after everyone moves on, I turn to Mr. Kamalu and say, oh my, you've got big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, after you know, reading the resume and listening to references, uh, I'm absolutely sure that we're again going to be blessed um, it, because it's such a it's such a, a, a position that that uh, takes takes more than than training. You know, one's heart has to be be in it because uh, w without the, without the heart, it's uh, it's a position that will just eat somebody alive. And um, and I'm just really um, happy that uh, that you that you chose us, and um, uh, and I'm I'm sure we're going to work well together. Your, your your references are we're glowing. So thank you very much. Glad to live up to. <laughs> Thanks. So coming from Medfield, I think we are kind of a. I don't think you'll you'll see a, a big huge difference in community in Medfield to the community of, of Hopkinton. I think they're probably similar uh, problems that the, the kids and the youth will face so you know it's nice to for someone to come in with a with a fresh uh, outlook and a fresh point of view on how this should work um, you know Denise your predecessor did an absolutely wonderful job um, and a big shoes for you to fill but um, looking at your resume it certainly looks like you're uh, you're up for it if you could spend some time at Bridgewater State <laughs> At the hospital, <laughs> not the college. Then uh, your, thin's per your skin's pretty thick. Spent a little time there myself, not as a patient, <laughs> <laughs> as a worker. So, welcome to Hopkin. Thank you. I just want to say welcome to Hopkinton. You know, it's um, you have some big shoes to fill. Denise was uh, was wonderful, but uh, from looking at your resume, I'm I'm truly impressed. Um, all the work that you've done, I think, uh, I think we're in good hands leaving our children in your care. So uh, thank you for everything you've done so far, and we look forward to what you can bring us further in our, in our town. Didn't mean to rush anybody. Thank you. Thank you again, Doc. Okay. Well, okay. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, did, did we take that vote? I made the mo asked for the motion. Did we vote it? Okay. I I made a motion. I asked for a motion. I think it was moved and seconded. seconded. Yep. Okay. All those in favor of uh, the appointment of Don Alcott as Youth and Family Services Director, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That is unanimous. Thank you, Don. Welcome, Don. Thank you. Thank you. And now. Uh, we do have a posted public hearing at 7.15, so again, um, I would like to open that and then ask Mr. Dunn if he'd be willing to just hold while we finish these appointments. But the hour being 7.15, I will ask um, for a motion to open the public hearing. This is a continued public hearing for Bittersweet Company. Common, yes? We don't have to open it. We, didn't close we don't have to open it. Okay. So do I still have, I still need to... Just introduce it. Until introduce it, it though. Yeah. This is a continued public hearing for Bittersweet Company, common fiddler license, section 12, beer and wine, alcohol license, and entertainment license for 2224 Main Street. The Board of Selectmen will continue a public hearing relative to, one, section 12 restaurant, wines and malt beverages, annual license application from Chow and Dunn. On behalf of Oliveira and Dunn, the bitter, doing business as Bittersweet Company, 2224 Main Street to operate a food establishment 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday and two, entertainment license to allow events to be held on Wednesday through Saturday evenings from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Proposed manager of record is Mark Peranti. In addition to the entertainment license, the Board of Selectmen will consider issuing a common visual license which does not require a public hearing. Further, a special permit is required from the Board of Appeals for live commercial entertainment in the downtown business district. The public hearing was continued so the applicant could provide additional information relative to the license request, specifically addressing permitting team comments. <coughs> Issues included the grease trap system, parking, and a public safety code compliance, 
A building permit for renovations to the premises was applied for on March 29, 2019. The building department is awaiting comments and information from the project architect and the fire department relative to public safety code compliance. Applications have not been submitted to the planning board, shared parking, or the Board of Appeals live commercial entertainment. So, we will pick up where we left off. Um, but if you will indulge us for just a few more minutes, um, we have a couple more appointments. Mr. Kamalo, uh, who would you like to take next? Lisa. Lisa Dion, outreach worker. Come on, Lisa. Welcome. I gather Lisa will be working with Dawn. No, actually. No? No, she'll be working at the senior I mean, center. Yes. I mean, yeah. with Ashley. Okay, okay. Yeah. Senior services, okay. Yeah. The other department. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. As you may know, she is, Lisa is going to be uh, replacing Joyce Ram, uh, who was with the town for a very, very, very long time um, as the next outreach coordinator. Uh, her experience, she's, she worked for five years for the Bolton Council on Aging, also worked as a marketing director for Newton Senior Living, Long Middle Place. Also worked as a branch manager for Health South Home Health Care Services. Uh, you have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Elementary Education from Lesley University yes. and an, an Associate degree in Interior Design from Newbury College. References revealed your tireless energy, positive attitude, always going above and beyond. Your judgment and decision making skills are beyond reproach. This is what we had, uh, and that you have a sincere compassion for working with seniors. Yes. Uh, we had two rounds of interviews, and um, they included the senior services director, the school resource officer Phil Powers, the fire prevention officer Tim Healy, the HR director Maria Casey, the senior services director Amy Beck, the health, health Services Director, Sean McAuliffe, and also the HR Generalist, Christine Merrill. Excellent. Well, welcome. Um, as we mentioned earlier, it's a growing community. The needs just keep growing. And uh, despite our huge school population and so much focus that's on that population, it's, it's equally important that we serve the entire spectrum, and particularly our seniors who Many of them have been here very many years. They're the ones that have borne the burden and made this town what it is. And so um, every opportunity to serve them and, and improve our services to them is, is really important and it really is their due. So we're really glad to have this spot filled. And it sounds like it's being filled with someone with some really outstanding qualifications. So thank you. Glad to have you. Mr. Hurt? I think it's great. I'm sure Amy was in on all this, and uh, anything that Amy does, I'm all for. So welcome to town. Thank you. This is a great uh, opportunity for the community and for yourself. And really glad to see you join the team. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yep, same thing here. It's uh, we're glad to grab you from Bolton. Bolton's a great little town, um, but uh, we're, we're way better. <laughs> <laughs> we're way better. So uh, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. Thanks so much. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm just glad to see your five years experience at, in, in Bolton uh, because they, 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 we're a similar, similar size town, similar growth, growth issues, and uh, you know similar issues with uh, with the, with outreach. You know, and it's and it's not just outreach with with elderly. It's it's you know it's meals on wheels, and keeping the elderly in their homes so they feel comfortable and not have to uh, not have to go into assisted living and such. So uh, really, it's a, another home run. Our, our HR department and Mr. Kamalo and your, your crew and another great hire. Thank you very much and thank you for coming. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for coming. I think the uh, the three-page resume you know, sending us a buck to go through is <laughs> just a testament to, to all your qualifications. I think we couldn't have done better. Um, really happy to have you and uh, you know none of us grow younger so <laughs> having someone along uh, to help guide our elderly and help everyone. Uh, I think it's a, a true asset to our town. Thanks so much, it's an honor to be here. 
Well, we're honored to have you, Lisa. Thank you. We're, we're happy you're here. And uh, I would uh, like to request a motion now to affirm the town manager's appointment of Lisa Dion as outreach worker. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous and official. Thank Thanks you, so much. Thank you. Have Thanks for coming. Thank Ashley Shaheen. Ashley. So we're greeting Ashley Shaheen, mm -hmm. who will be our new Assistant Director of Senior Services. Hello. Tell us all about Ashley, Mr. Kamalo. Very easy starting point. She will be replacing Amy Beck, not as the Director. You may recall Amy Beck is our <laughs> former Assistant Director. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she's uh, joining us after spending six years uh, for the work, working for the Wesley Council on Aging as the Senior Activities Coordinator. You also worked as the Community Engagement Fellow for the North Shore Community Development Coalition. You have a Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences degree, um, as well as a Master of Education degree concentrating in community engagement from the Merrimack College. References revealed that seniors are just drawn to you. You are eager and open to building strong relationships with your clients as well as with the community. You are good at supporting the strategic directions of the organizations that you work for uh, and throughout the interview process you confirmed to us that you're going to be an asset uh, to the department, uh, to Amy, uh, in our strategic planning process. Uh, you were confirmed to us to be a hard worker with very strong communication skills. The interview panels, again, we had two, including the Senior Services Director, Amy Beck, the Recreation Director, Jay Guelfi, the Chief Financial Officer, Tim O'Leary, uh, the HR Generalist, Christine Merrill, the Assistant Town Manager, Elaine Lazarus, the Grants and Procurement Manager, Ben Sweeney, and Police Sergeant, Scott Van Ralten. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Gauntlet. You ran the gauntlet. You did. did. My <laughs> God. You're still yeah. smiling about this. <laughs> She's still so goodness. <laughs> Very happy <laughs> about this new role and getting to know the community and working with Amy and the rest of the team and community partners and boards and it's very exciting for me, and um, I can't wait to start on Tuesday. <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you, and it sounds like we've built a really, really strong team. And uh, if you got through that gauntlet of, uh, of interviews, I, I <laughs> good for you. I, I grew up in the town of Wellesley, which is a great town. But I think Hopkinton, you'll find, just because of its size, it's a very engaged community. People know each other. Um, there's a real sense of closeness and community. And uh, so I think it's really important that we have those strong services to meet those needs because people feel very connected mm -hmm. to their community. And uh, a lot of people who have been here for a very long time, and it's... it's um, it's what we owe our seniors to, to provide those services in a, in a top-notch way mm -hmm. because they're the ones that built the town. So we're just so glad to have you as part of the team, and it sounds like you guys will be off and running very soon. So welcome. Thank you. Well, I, I, then I'll, I'll start. Have. I'll start then with the, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the um, Elder Services is just near and dear to my heart. I was the uh, facility director at Golden Pond right here in the corner for, for a couple of years. And um, uh, my mother moved, moved to town, I guess, like 18 years ago. And within the first six months of her living here, she looked at me and said, John, I have more friends here in six months than I did 30 years living in Swampskit. Yes. 
the town. And that's just the kind of town we are. It means you just got engaged in, in, in all the all the act, all senior activities, and and it's just uh, it was just a great 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 time for my mother to be here for all those years. And so, uh, really, uh, uh, it's a it's it's a great spot. And and, and looking at your at your, your resume also, great set this time. You should spread them out instead of just four wonderful people all at once. But this is just, this is great. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming and joining us. And, and your, 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 your attitude it just, just screams that you can be doing a wonderful job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to say, you know, welcome to the town. Um, you know, I, I moved here. Uh, it's kind of a complicated story, but uh, I really moved here again uh, a few years back and actually renovated the house to bring my mom in. She's been discovering the senior center and is just loving it, and um, it's given her a whole new, uh, whole new outlook on, on on the services available and the people that she can meet. She just loves it, so can't wait for her to meet you. Yeah, likewise, it's a beautiful center. It is. Well. I will entertain a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Ashley Shaheen as our new assistant director of senior services. And Mr. Herr, if you'd like to ask a question, please do. So I believe we have dance classes of some kind at the senior center on occasion. Is that true? Do we have ballet classes there? Half. So close. Not well, I should say that. I don't know about it. But. Close, but I see the ballet, and that's that's pretty impressive. And just give me point. Nobody goes right up a point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> but uh, I think it's great. You got a great resume. I think the town's going to really welcome you with open arms, and the seniors will love having you down there. And uh, I think you can bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm to the job. And uh, it, does this complete the staff now for us, Mr. Kamau? So there's a lot going on here. Uh, yeah. So it's great that it's all getting done. And everyone's starting basically at the same time, yeah. for the most part, right? The new ones, anyway. So I think that'll help as well, too. So welcome and thank you for joining the team. Well, thank you. Now, would someone like to make that motion to affirm Ashley's appointment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Last but not least, John. Am I pronouncing it right? Gelsich? Yes, impressed that you got it correct. Our new principal <laughs> planner. Boy, we need you. <laughs> Mr. Kamal, <laughs> tell us all the good news about this guy. I thought they'd scare him off last night at 11.30. <laughs> yeah, for another round. We'll let you out here earlier. Yeah. Um, first off, let me thank um, uh, Mario Kramer, the chair of the planning board. Uh, Assistant Town Manager Elaine Lazarus, Deputy Deputy Director John Westerling, uh, Kobe Wallace, Land Use and Principal Planning Administrative Assistant, uh, HR Generalist again, uh, Christine Merrill, um, the Conservation Administrator John McAdams, the Fire Prevention Officer Tom Poria, uh, as well as uh, HR Director Maria Casey. Uh, these were members of the interview panels that interviewed John. Uh, he's joining us with a ton of experience in land use planning. Uh, his last appointment was with Bills and Thomas. And I, and I understand that in that role, you may also have had assignments here in town in Hopkinton. Also worked as a planner and a land use administrator for the city of Chelsea. Worked as a planning consultant for the Massachusetts Smart Growth Alliance. Uh, as well as a planner slash research associate for LDS Consulting, as well as a senior planner for Sakati and Schiff Inc. You have a Masters of, a Masters of Urban and Regional Planning degree from the Virginia Polytech Institute and State University. Uh, your references have described you as responsible, dependable, <laughs> responsive. You have a a fantastic ability to anticipate needs and understand what constituents are asking for. Uh, you are able to understand multiple viewpoints because you listen very well. Um, you are great at picking up 
this specific point when to ask questions, your public speaking abilities are highly commendable. Welcome to the team. Thank you. That's a great recommendation, and I know from first-hand experience how important all those qualities are. Um, I sat on that board for a very long time, and when I came on, Elaine was our principal planner, and when she announced one day that she was moving into a different position, I thought the moon and the stars had fallen on my head <laughs> because how heavily the board leans on that planner. And since that time and the various people who have come at various different times, there's so much there and it's a volunteer board and there's we'd get packets that were like this and and what the principal planner puts together to help the board really I always felt like you spoon fed us Elaine um, but to lay it out in ways that where you understand the salient points and you understand where you do and do not have jurisdiction it, it's just it makes such a difference in how efficient the board is and how how um, you know how, how correctly you handle each application and as you know um, it's a nine-person board there's all those personalities as you mentioned um, as Mr. Kamala mentioned that ability to understand and hear the different voices and the different viewpoints and and um, treat everyone respectfully and being able to zero in on where that where the issues are um, that's just such a huge skill and um, you know in the time that the spot has been open we certainly had Elaine who's the best of the best they're filling in but it's a big job and I can't tell you how grateful we are to have someone here to fill it again so welcome welcome we're delighted to have you here I'm excited to get started and a couple of us have been on the planning board Four so us. we know yeah, yeah almost everybody almost me. No, <laughs> smart <that. laughs> we know I have one quick one Sure. Let's go. Let's okay. go. <laughs> if you have an issue with that, as a former graduate of the university, not former, as a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh, mm. I noticed how he tried to hide Virginia Tech in his resume here a little bit by saying Hi. Virginia Polytechnic Celebrated. Institute or whatever. Uh, other than the Virginia Tech affiliation, which is a great school, a great degree, we won't hold that against you for much longer. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Lazarus, you were in on this, right? I think you were yes. part of that. And who, who hang in there for one sec, John. Who will John report to? Uh, reports to my to my position. Reports to the the department head. Department head position. Okay, yeah. right. Was that how it had? Well, you've been doing it for a while. So in same. the past, the since same. we changed that around, that's how it's been. Right. That's the structure of the department. Okay, and that's in the <laughs> charter too, right? It was an administrative order. Coming from the region. From the order slice. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, great. John, welcome. Uh, all kidding aside, um, for whatever reason, Pitt seems to have you guys' number, though. We they, they, do. they do. They <laughs> do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great place down there. They got Michael Vick, don't they? Sorry? Don't they have Michael Vick? They had Michael Vick, yes. <laughs> um, interesting show on ESPN about him. He's come a long way. Um, it's a big job here in town, as the chair mentioned. Uh, working with Elaine, I think, will be a really great help to you uh, and to all of us uh, in the community once you get into the job and get going. She'll be a great resource. Uh, will he be the one attending the meetings here in a little bit soon? Yes. I, I happened to catch a little bit of the meeting the other night. I'm like, like you were here last night, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's so, <laughs> um, we need to get her a little sleep time every now and then. <laughs> um, so it's really, really, it's a great position here in town. It's a big position here in town. And we're glad to have you. So welcome and thanks for joining the team. Thank you. We good? Uh, no, well, I just, okay, then. I, I just want to say that uh, that's why I hit you with the let's go. Uh, I've just been down to the to VT for the, my third visit. My daughter actually just uh, signed on. She's going to be going to VT, same college, the College of uh, Architecture and Urban Studies. And um, I don't know what he's saying down there. It's, it really is a great school. And uh, and you know having having your two degrees there, you know they they really did a great sell on me. And if you're coming out of there, that's it's good enough for me. I hope you're not going to wear those clothes to meetings, Mr. Catino. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
Very impressive resume. Um, I went to UMass, so I don't care about Virginia Tech. So, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Run with it. That's cool. What jumps out to me is you bringing more microbreweries to southern New England. I thank you for that. <laughs> I think that should be right up in the front page, not in the back. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Uh, I haven't served on the uh, planning board. It is, you know, we, we, we lean heavily on you. And um, the board members do. We don't anymore. Uh, but we le really lean heavily on you. And uh, big shoes to fill. But um, happy to have you along. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. We are pleased to have this great team going forward. So last but not <coughs> least, I would request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of Mr. John Gelsich as principal planner. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye and oppose. It is unanimous. Go team. Thank you. Hokey, hokey, hokey <laughs> hat. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're already all over it. CJ, thank you for being patient. Okay. I appreciate uh, you being patient, Mr. Dunn. Uh, it was nice to get these get uh, these all appointed. And we will go back to the bittersweet public hearing. Uh, I, we can hold on to that. I think the Gary Sinise Foundation can. It's here. It's been here since here? before the meeting started. Oh. So, <clears throat> one second here. So, if I may, um, Mr. Tark has been here since the beginning of the meeting for his fee waiver request for his uh, the Gary Sinise Rise Foundation. I would uh, entertain a motion for the Board of Selectmen to approve a request for <coughs> permit fees from Ed Tarker, VW Tarker, uh, who's working with the Gary Sinise Rise Foundation who will be con constructing a house at no cost for disabled veterans and his family who have chosen to live in Hopkinton. Um, Ed Tarker builds, has been a builder in town for a long, long, long time. He built some of the very best houses. He does not cut corners. And, and the fact that Ed is <coughs> sistered up with this Gary Sinise Foundation just more credibility to both entities. So I would like to make a motion as I read it. Second. Okay. Um, I certainly agree with you. And uh, apologies again. Uh, for those who don't know the Gary Sinise Foundation, Gary Sinise is very well known for the work he does for veterans. He's particularly well known as Lieutenant Dan from uh, Forrest Gump. He has all kinds of programs that have helped the veterans. And this particular gentleman um, who has chosen to make his home in Hopkinton. Um, this is through his uh, Gary Sinise's RISE Foundation, which stands for Restoring Independence and Supporting Empowerment. It particularly focuses on the most severely wounded veterans from the post 9-11 era. And this uh, gentleman who will be making his home in Hopkinton was severely wounded in Afghanistan in 2011. Um, he stepped on an IED and lost both legs and a piece of his arm. And he came from a long line of military families and uh, chose to serve, particularly after the events of 9-11. And so we are, we are delighted, <coughs> I think, uh, that we'll have him as a member of our community. And my understanding is that the Building and permit fees, including plumbing, heating, electric, HVAC, I believe, total about $3,500. That uh, if this is approved, the town will be waiving and uh, appreciate Mr. Tarka's work in uh, doing this construction. So I just wanted to mention that so people watching at home understand uh, what this is. And if anyone wants to, they can go to the Garrison East Foundation. Um, Google it. There's a wonderful video that tells about the foundation and its activities, and particularly the Rise Foundation. So, um, having said that, there is so, a motion. Yes. So I didn't want to be presumptive, Ed. I don't. You, I didn't think you wanted to come up and talk. You can if you want, but I've known you long enough to know that. Anyone have any questions? Yep. So, 
Thank you very much for uh, for partnering with these guys. It's a it's a great foundation. Okay. Okay, that has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And oppose that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tarka. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dunn. Back again. Back again, yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> tell us where we stand. You've made some progress, I see. Looks like there's still some loose ends in various areas. Where, where are we? Um, I think it's pretty much um, completed from a department point of view. Um, uh, an issue arose over the grease trap today. Um, on Friday, I was told that grease guarding would be acceptable, and on Monday, I was told it couldn't be used. So, I um, quickly got a uh, spec done for the grease trap. It's going to be an external grease trap. It's the one that's been spec'd up by Westborough and given to the GPW here in Hopkinton. I visited Carl over in the GPW in Barber today, or Westborough, wherever, and uh, he would accept the return waste from me as long as we use this particular grease trap. The return waste pipe in the building needs to be replaced. The landlord is aware of that and we are excavating to do that, so putting the grease trap in is not going to be an issue. And we are going to put the one in that's been specced up by the town. So there were really three <coughs> pieces of the request to the Board of Selectmen tonight. Mm -hmm. One is for the beer and wine license, mm -hmm. section 12. One is for the entertainment license. Mm -hmm. And the third is for the common visualer license. Correct. And my understanding now on the, on the entertainment license that still ha does it still have to be approved by the yeah. CBA? Okay. Yeah. So if we gave the approval, that would be conditional on the Based CBA on approving it. Yeah. So a number of the outstanding things relative to the food service still have to be approved by the Board of Health mm -hmm. or by the building department. Um, I believe that they're in order. I'm not aware of anything else. Um, Sean McCullough sent over his notes um, maybe Friday, and he said it needs code, and we're approved. He did make some recommendations, and I answered that, and uh, I'm facilitating all his recommendations, basically. I'm a confused about the grease trap. Can you explain where, where Westboro fits in? Would this come from Hopkins? Uh, yeah, some of, I believe some of, uh, it was new to me also. And um, so I went to Westboro today to establish, you know, it, you know, if this main is on their system, and I believe it is. So 28 doesn't have one. It doesn't have a return waste, but the building next door, the one I'm going into, does. And therefore, once there's a, a return waste pipe out, I have to, a grease guardian won't work, and the grease trap has to go in. So that's... Uh, I had to get permission that Westboro will take the waste, I believe, and that's what I did today. Oh. Madam Chair, I just want to take it take it one <coughs> level up, you know, and, and, and as much as we want to expedite this as, much, as fast sure. as possible to help you get into business, <coughs> normally we get a package that has it's that 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 has everything in there, the the, mm -hmm. the floor layout. This it's been checked off. We get the. The notes from even when we just do a one-day license, sure. we get the notes from the police, notes from the fire, notes from the board of health, and we get everything check, 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 and and, and to the and to the uh, the chair usually finds something that says, and we have questions, and sure. we, we we do that. What gets what what I'm, I don't understand is why you're coming to get your your entertainment and liquor license before you're getting the. Um, uh, Oh, approval from the planning board and approval from the building department like that your building should be built out mm -hmm. so you know how big it is you know you just went went down to 49 people I found out today so you don't have to have the have the, uh, the sprinkler system so it, it seems like it's, it's just a moving target that 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 will approve a, if we do a, even a conditional approval for entertainment license and a liquor license and a victuals license that something may change and then it might have to come back to us. So I'm wondering, you know, if you could get a, if, for me, I'm just saying, if we could have a, a, a package that says it's going to be 49 people, that the, that the fire department signed off on it, planning board says the parking's okay, because even at 49 people, you need 20 spaces. No, I don't. Isn't it three per, three per, and plus one per mm -hmm. each, each employee? Oh, mm -hmm. you need a yeah. 
But I'm just saying that we need all these things because if the planning board all of a sudden says, look, we don't approve of it, but you already have a license, you're already heading forth with, with your liquor license, it's, it's just, we were going, I think we're going backwards from what we've ever done before. And that's just... Um, may I? You sure? Um, yeah, you know, I will admit that the package, as you per se, hasn't, didn't have all the boxes uh, ticked off in it. Um, something like the capacity. Uh, last week I was considered a nightclub under the new code. Now, I never wanted to open a nightclub and I don't want to be a nightclub owner. And basically, the new code suggests that anybody, a capacity of 50 or more, you're in the nightclub bracket and the suppression system needs to go in. You know, it, the code was issued a couple of months ago. It came to light on Friday. I'm not a code specialist. It's not my job to know the codes. And, you know, I do do some research on it. And that's what happens to the capacity. The decision was made by the... the uh, building department is so just going to write the 49 on it and sign it on the drawings and that would be good enough for the board. I'm only going on the advice that was given to me by the town uh, offices, you know. Uh, I don't, I'm not aware today sitting here that there are any outstanding issues in my application or package per se uh, other than the approval of the planning board for entertainment and the appeals board for um, the off-site parking. I, I, I've checked every single department today and yesterday. Uh, I phoned, I suppose, the fire chief, police chief, environmental health officer, every single department, and they said it was all subject to approval, that they had no issues. So I'm quite surprised to hear today that perhaps that's not, that hasn't been um, uh, communicated to you guys, but it was communicated to me today. So I'm... I'm sure if you could. So we have two highly skilled uh, colleagues here with us this evening that could probably comment on where we are with this application in general. So, um, you know, we come in every two weeks and sit down and we go through notes and we try to figure out in our heads sure. what's going on. These folks are living it every day. So I think we need to figure out where the town administration looks at this application right now. Are we closer than we were a couple of weeks ago? Yes or no? Yes. Are we done? In terms of the licenses um, that fall under the Board of Selectmen, the answer is yes. Okay, so <coughs> this is not perhaps following the normal course that things have followed in the past, <coughs> but for our job, our, our team is telling us we're good to go. So I think we should try and focus on that and not go beyond what we're supposed to well, do. Well, if I, if I may, through the chair. Any further delay this. It, not that I'm trying to, de to say delay it uh, at all, but we're the only board that actually has discretion. Every other board, Board of Health, Planning Board, everyone else has, has strict guidelines as to X amount of spaces, X amount of feet, um, the capacity of, of, a, of, a, uh, of a system, so to speak. We're the only ones that can step back and say, okay, um, we dropped it from 50 to 49. What happens if there's one extra person in there, which is what's happened down at uh, Cornell's one time with the, with the fire chief and stuff? What happens with some of these other issues that, so that, that we have to, uh, you know, it, for me it's just been, it's been a, a moving target, you know, when, when it's, when... Uh, but, but we just heard our professional team say we're going to what we've okay, done that, that's the, Under our purview, we're good. Is that true? That is true. I, I think you bring up valid points, but they're not, that's not our job. Well, no, if I may do the chair, one of the things that you always do, even though I have one day licenses, you're always putting, putting the hammer down, and I'm surprised that, that, that you're being, you know, I, I, the hammer's going to be there if they serve illegal alcohol, alcohol the illegal okay. minors. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about <laughs> Board of Health stuff and all these other things. That's their problem. That's not our problem. I don't want to make it our problem. We're trying to advance the business moving forward in town, and according to our team, we have everything we need to vote on, and maybe they don't have everything done with the other boards, but that's their problem, not our problem, and the other boards will figure that out with them. So do we routinely um, grant approvals pending approvals from other boards? Yeah. yeah. So what I see here is... Um, the police chief says the applicant has provided the requested documents that I asked for. We are satisfied with their plan. So this included floor plan, bar setup, storage for alcohol, mm -hmm. copy of al applicant's policy over serving carding, etc. The police are satisfied. 
the Board of Health <coughs> has told us that relative to the equipment part, they are satisfied. What is to be served or the food permitting, that falls under the Board of Health, which will come later from them mm -hmm. reviewing your actual menu. But we're not looking at your food. We're looking at your ability, your, your setup for serving okay. being a vittler. And Board of Health says the service part is okay. There is, are things outstanding with the fire department, but the, I believe the fire department and the grease trap and all this are structural. You obviously can't open until you get the building sure. department to sign off on the building part, which is not us. That's the building. So to Mr. Hur's point, if we permit the alcohol, we permit the food service ability, not the food, but the food serving ability license, and then we can talk about the entertainment, you still can't open until you get the building part taken care of mm -hmm. from the permitting agencies in the town Correct. that handle building. Yeah. So there's, there's different points that need to be met, but we're not the building department. On that, Madam Chairman, uh, I spoke with the fire chief today, and he said we were good to go. There was, they had no issues. I believe he's here today. Um, if that isn't being communicated, I, I, I'm unsure as to why. But I phoned around today and spoke with him at 3:30 today, and he said we're good to go. CJ, you've met. You know, when I came out of here the last time, there was a list of questions. As far as I'm concerned. Um, with the exception of the application in as a part of the appeals board, I have, ev I have uh, submitted everything and all the supporting documents and all the information required. If somebody, some department comes back to me the day before this meeting and says, oh, well, you know, I've changed my mind, that's not correct, this is what you should, this is what you need, that needs to be taken into consideration. I have been given the runaround, you know, and I appreciate what, where John's coming from, but you know, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. It's been an arduous process. But I, I come here tonight with only one thing in my mind, that the grease trap spec that I was given on Friday was incorrect. I was given a new one on Monday. And I acted upon that so much so that I drove to Westbrook. That's the only um, uh, issue that I believe would hold me back at this point in time. I've got eight weeks, possibly, of construction ahead of me. Um, if there's anything that comes up in that eight weeks, I will deal with it, you know, and it's part of the process. <clears throat> uh, I, I believe that if I satisfy each department, um, I, I thought I was good to go. I was confident coming in here today. Well, I mean, I certainly don't doubt that, you know, in, in your previous location, you were a restaurant moving into an existing restaurant that was kind of set up. This is all new, so I'm not, I'm not surprised that there's a lot of details that are coming up because you've got a couple of facilities that were never used for restaurant purposes, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, um, and, and, you know, a lot of it doesn't come to this board. Sure. But um, I know you had not had any kind of a building inspection, the um, fire department said since, what, 2018, but you've met with the chief who's back here now, I guess. Chief chief chief. 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 If, if I may, I, the chair, do we see, you know, because we, we have, we have a full paragraph from the chief saying that right. he wants d detail on the floor plans and, and such. Then we've got, um, we've got uh, Lieutenant Porter, that that was saying that um he said he's fine with it no but but then there's but then look at the other page we still like to see a floor plan including the bar step as well as storage for the alcohol I'd like to request a copy of the applicant's policy on serving carding etc we also request to keep it update management at the police station but then he said the applicant has provided requested documents chief porter on the next so page. which is that's the, which is the, which is the newest one right now the applicant has provided the requested documents. Okay, so, so then, then, then do the chair, may I ask the chief? Okay. May I ask the, the fire chief? Uh, fire chief. Because, no, because no, I no, wonder no, which, no, one, no. which one we're supposed to be reading which one we're not. Well, that was police. Yes, I know, I know. But, but does, the, does, the, does the fire chief have, a, have an update? Chief Slamman. Because then I'll be fine. Sounds to me like he's got some outstanding stuff, but the question is can, can that be accomplished later? Chief. Good evening. So just from a uh, regulatory aspect, the, the building instructor is the one that um, when I like request the plans to talk about occupancy access, things like that. That's that's uh, something that the building inspector identifies and actually advises me. He, he um, he'll talk to me about a use group uh, based on what the applicant's paperwork is. 
So since I last commented, um, Mr. Shepard had an email that went through with CJ and they went back and forth and identified um, numbers and occupancy type. Mr. Shepard identified it as an A2 class group and he also said by, based on the applicant's description that it uh, fits the category of nightclub by two or more of the check boxes that are in his description of how it's going to be used. What's the significance of that? So from, as far as I'm concerned, everything that I saw with those, um, it, it meets the re regulatory requirement um, as a board. And I said to uh, CJ when we talked today, I take any, um, any use groups that um, are challenging, like a nightclub. Um, you're literally right on the edge of what the use group is, the number of people that go in there. Um, and um, so I talked to CJ about creep. I talked to all of our applicants when they come in. I didn't want to see any creep because it literally is the, the building itself is a small building. <coughs> it's going to be dense in its occupancy. Um, by the description, it puts some stresses on it. And when you use entertainment, mm -hmm. alcohol, the description of what's going to be there, the board should just really realize that we're right on the edge of what I, especially as a fire chief, just want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, one of the more challenging risk factors that we deal with when it comes to occupancy. So it, it, regulatory-wise, what I talked to CJ today, what I saw in design, it, um, it meets it so far. There's a, still a deeper assessment that he'll go through in the permitting process as we see it, everything play out. We're able to look at exits with more detail. Um, we just have a floor plan right now that we're looking at. So, so far, so good. Um, from a regulatory standpoint. I hope I'm helping you with some of the other aspects of what I think fall under entertainment and liquor and, and the pieces that start to add up with some risk factors. So when you say permitting process, you mean the permitting process with the building department? Yeah, so we, we actually uh, work with the building department to do occupancy permits. There's a few other details that we might specialize in this, if it has a hood system or not. Again, I haven't quite seen how that will all work out. So that's, and we do that all with the building department. So those ducks have to be gotten in a row by you in the building department, but not necessarily. Yeah, and that part we haven't gotten to yet. Right. right. And some of that will take place as they do the actual <laughs> build out and they can right. yeah. inspection of this and inspection of that. Yeah. They'll have to adjust to certain things. Yeah. And, yeah. and some of these same comments I would say to the planning board and they would assess it in their process also. Mm -hmm. So you went from something, whatever the initial occupancy was, hold on, Chief, mm -hmm. down to 49. Yep. So, and that was, now you don't have to sprinkle the building, you don't have to use fire suppression. <laughs> is it a building space that'll hold 50 comfortably, or is it a building space that would hold 300? I know it won't hold 300. No, we'll you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so it, would be, it would be terrible to see us say, yes, we're going to, okay, everything's great for your 49. And then the night before Thanksgiving, have, you know, the cops come up and say, well, we actually had 475 people here. So it's... I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. I think, you know, the board knows me um, from serving alcohol in town, and I, I am very responsible about it. I'm totally uh, committed to RAMP, Responsible Alcohol Management Project. And, you know, I think public safety and the safety of my guests is paramount. Um, and I've always acted on behalf of, uh, to honour that and to make sure I protected it, so much so that I've shut people off of the bar because they've had too much alcohol. And uh, I have no problem doing it in my own premises, and certainly I'm going to be much more cautious there than I am anywhere else. And, um, you know, we spoke today, uh, Chief and I, and perhaps in a year's time, even though I don't come up to that code now to put in the fire suppression system, maybe I'll be rich enough to be able to afford it and I'll put it in. But, you know, meeting that and the wheelchair accessibility code has been a tough financial uh, responsibility for me, but we're doing it, you know, and I didn't drop it down to not put the suppression system in for that reason. I, I, I did it because I don't want to be a nightclub and I don't want to fall into that category and I, that was, that, that's really the reason why I dropped it down, so I would come out of that category. Um, because it's not what I want to be or run or own and uh, I understand where it comes from and that the code changed as a result of, of some problems here um, so, so you know I said I'll drop it down and lose six or seven seats just to you know I, I don't want that that uh, badge nightclub I really don't so. so is it not a nightclub if it's 49 and is a nightclub if it's 50 well, it would be a nightclub either way uh, there's a trigger in the Building code, code that, that um, once you get to 50, that would be um, 
I'm going to let the building inspector describe it the best, but I believe it would be um, um, hollow, a sprinkle system at that point. Because I know, I know there's a number because we had to uh, at the uh, Hopkins Sportsman's Club. They, they, they got rid of the, uh, the club license because of uh, they would have had to put a sprinkler system in. I remember that. Yeah, when the new code came through, they look at um, existing buildings a little different than um, new occupancies. You know, and I think that's why you're looking at this a little different because a new occupancy is different than it's just the way they do write the codes. They have some grandfathering and some pre-existing that they, um, they make a lesser judgment on. If I may do the chair, is there some kind of compliance agreement that we <clears throat> is this is there any, I mean, you mentioned something to me? Uh, I mean, in the past, where you're going, my next recommendation to you would be um, at a minimum have the uh, crowd manager certificate in place. I like that um, based on some of the other histories. <clears throat> of it makes somebody aware of the responsibility, especially in this case, because they would be um, against such a uh, challenging barrier of token line. So. I would just recommend that you put that in. I've been doing that with all of your entertainment yeah. licenses because it's connected yeah. to that. So I took the course and I was talking to the chief today about it. Um, I was absolutely horrified to watch the video that goes along with it and to see what happened up in Rhode Island in two minutes was absolutely shocking. Oh, the state um, nightclub. Yeah, you, you know, uh, so, so I, think, I think it should be something that everybody has to do because it certainly was an eye-opener for me um, in terms of how quickly a fire can spread and how slowly people react to it. And I think that was the shocking thing. And, you know, at the very end, you realise how many people lost their lives there that night. It's shocking. It really is terrible, yeah. So I took the course, and I'm glad I did it. And I think everybody should do it, really. Yeah. You know? um, so clarify for me. The, the um, special permit required from the Board of Appeals for live commercial entertainment in the downtown business district. I Heard so much, I can't keep everything straight. Did I understand you still have to get that, or was, or, or was that no? That is required. Mm -hmm. So, regardless of 50 or 49, you still have to go to Board of Appeals to get that yep. approved. So, again, this would be the entertainment license would be conditional upon you approve <coughs> getting the required approval from yes. the GBA. So I was asked to go back to the GBA, and I guess I'm a little confused. I wouldn't consider myself a new business here in town. I would consider myself an existing business in the town, but I'm classified as a new business now because I'm changing from one building to another. Fair enough. What I didn't um, anticipate was that I would have to... I never got the physical entertainment license last year. I was approved for it. I never, I never physically got it. And... Um, to have to go through the whole process again, I was quite surprised about. I assumed the comma victuallers, the entertainment license, uh, would be transferred. Um, I, I applied for my comma victuallers license at 28 in December, like everybody else in the town did, and got it. But it, I now have to start the whole process over again. And, you know, to be referred to as a new business in town, I'm not. You know, I have ceased trading for some time, but I'm not a new business. I, I'm, I've, I've been here and, you know, want to obviously stay invested in the town. Um, and uh, th that's what the process, th that's what the, the town asked for. So I've just followed what I've been asked to do, and I've reapplied. Well, I, you know, I know you have a lot of support <coughs> in the town, and, and Bittersweet has brought a really nice type of, even without the entertainment, a, a really nice option to the downtown, sure. and I, for one, have missed it being gone. Um, Me too. I will say, relative to the licenses, that my understanding of the town licenses <clears throat> is that most of what the fee goes towards is there's quite a bit of work that happens sure. in our office, um, going through all this and connecting, getting these reports and getting back, and um, much of what it covers is, is the very real work that gets gets done in processing an application and then when we go through it again for another application sure. there's a number of model work, another amount of work and and that's that's what those those are covering from the town sure. standpoint mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you on the beer and wine um, mm -hmm. I noticed there were the, the two tip certification one was for you and the other one was for Miss Curry's now Very is good. she still with you no she's not Mark, so, Mark would be oh okay so we haven't mm -hmm. so I don't know that we had another card, but we have it. Yeah, it was mailed to okay. the address actually. All right, so that's going to be submitted. Yeah. So yeah. there'll be two. And um, are you both crowd certified? It sounds yeah. like yeah, you need a second. Yeah, person. it's it's uh, you do it online, and you yeah. have a code that you're given to say that you have it. So right, right, because <coughs> you can't always guarantee that you're going to be there. Yeah, yeah. So you need oh, somebody. Probably else. will be. <laughs> the questions on the part of the board, Mr. Kamalo. Throughout the remaining 
process of uh, permitting <coughs> that they have to go through. Is that going to affect any of our permits? Would we have to come back and revise any of the permits that they're applying for based on the results of the, uh, <coughs> the future permitting? Thinking through this, <coughs> the planning board review requires him to downsize uh, the occupancy uh, relative to the availability of parking. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that change will need to be communicated to this office. Because if it changes the layout that the board has approved, mm -hmm. um, the board needs to know. And uh, similarly, with any changes that may be imposed by the building inspector, if they change the layout mm -hmm. um, from what the board is approving to today, sure. that has to be communicated back to this board, and uh, he will be required to to apply for an alteration of premises. So, if there's an alteration of premises. <coughs> Does, say, the liquor license or the entertainment license need to be revised or would it be a new application? The alteration of premises relates to the liquor license. Mm -hmm. um, that application uh, is, will be seeking an amendment to an existing license. It's not necessarily, he's not applying for a new license. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the question I have is whether or not <coughs> you're premature um, in coming before us right now. If you, you know, I don't want to waste your time either, but you, you know, you can <coughs> get your license. Well, you part, part and parcel of it was to try to get open with as much of the licensing out of the way as possible. You know, to open with the beer and wine license would be ideal. Um, I can't give you a finished building tomorrow. I can give you a finished building in six or eight weeks' time. But that would put me to the end of the summer, possibly September, before I have the necessary licenses I need to operate the, the business to its potential. And there won't, you know, I, I don't foresee it changing at all. Um, I have changed it so many times to fit code and, and to, to get approval on it. Um, if we're happy with it now, which the building department has signed off on, that's the building that I'm going to set about designing now and fitting out. Um, there won't be any changes. Um, that I'm aware of and you know I, I don't have a crystal ball but I have to kind of commit myself to the drawings that were submitted because mm -hmm. that's the ones that got approval and like everybody else that's what I'm going to do <clears throat> so oh, I'm sorry um, so you know I know you don't have a crystal ball mm -hmm. and I know that <coughs> plans change mm -hmm. and as you go through the process sometimes there are things issues that you hadn't thought of and You've gone through that already. And that's the only reason why I bring this up. Sure. That, you know, do you, you know, I think the feedback that you're hearing from us is not that we don't want you here. Sure. We definitely sure. want you here. Sure. Um, but we just want to see a complete package and, and just, you know, see everything. Mm -hmm. uh, approve it once, I guess is where we want to go. So, so to qualify what an approved package is, if each department signs off on his or her department saying that I meet code or I meet the requirements, is that part and parcel for signing off on the package? Um, because it was never really made clear to me, and I'm just wondering now, sitting here, if, you know, <clears throat> when you say you want it complete, I'm meeting the code, I've put in a lot of work to get us to where we need to be, I've changed it several times to appease several departments, I've listened to their advice, I've taken it on board, I've been proactive in the process since day one, and I just, um, I guess I'm feeling a little bit uh, of a pushback, and I know the public safety, and I know that um, there are issues that you, that you have to take seriously, but like I said, I left this meeting three weeks ago, and I set about making sure that each department was satisfied so that I could come back to this meeting. I didn't want to come back to this meeting and not be ready. Um, I'm getting the feeling that you, you, it appears that I'm not ready, but yet I've ticked off all the boxes for each of the departments with the exception of the grease trap. The Board of Appeals application for the, plan, for the parking hasn't gone in. Mr Kerry sent over a letter yesterday and I just wanted to finalise the mechanism of how people are going to park over there before I put the application through Elaine Lazarus. And um, that, that quite simply is, is the only thing that's that I'm waiting on. I, you know, that's something that I've got to figure out how is best to do that. And, you know, 
before, when, when I was Bitter Street, there wasn't as much traffic in the town as uh, parking as there is now. Mm. Um, but two years ago, when I bought Bitter Street, um, it was a ghost town. And I helped to traffic those people into downtown Hopkinton. And I even brought them from other towns. And you know, for, for, to, to miss out on, on, on it now, um, you know, I would be, I'd walk away from the meeting if I didn't get approval, even if it was just, uh, you know, with, with uh, provision for the next bit. That's really what I'm looking for. Um, I'd be disappointed. I made through the chair. See, when you were saying you're being proactive, what I see is you're being reactive. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you had to drop it from, from 50 something to 49, that was reactive. And then if it has to go to the planning board or the ZBA and you have to change your layout, it has to come back here. And I understand what you were saying, that you'd like to open as a liquor, as, mm -hmm. as a liquor establishment and then add food afterwards and, and just so you could start making, and making as much money as possible. And, 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 it's, and I understand it. Uh, uh, however, if you're saying, I promise nothing's going to change, but mm -hmm. it seems like every meeting or meeting with someone else, something changes. And, if it, and if you, even if you change just mm -hmm. the layout of the restaurant, because every restaurant that has a liquor license, they move, they move four deuces around, sure. it has to come back in. They add two more deuces, it has to come back in. I just think of Startline. When Startline came in, we were nervous about them being right next to the, the grocery store and, 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 and uh, uh, shop next door. We had made them put up an extra wall and everything else before, the, before we would um, grant their license. They had to come back and show us that the wall was being built yeah. and in. Then we signed off from their license. You know, mm -hmm. I think what you really need is somebody to help guide you. You, you know, a lot of people have, have legal counsel and, or have somebody like, uh, like Beals and Thomas or somebody else to, to guide them and say, this, this is what you need in order to, in order to get it. Because I'm just, it, it, you know, to Mr. Nasrullah's concerns, <clears throat> I'm just concerned that, that we'll, we, we, we sign off on something here. It gets the ZBA. ZBA says you have to change something. <clears throat> or Planning Board says you have to, you, you can, you have to show us that less tables. Then it comes back here anyway. Sure. Well, we've already you know, spent two nights doing this as it is. What if we have to spend a third night? That's their problem. I mean, we've already spent a ton of time on this. I know, but it doesn't mean that we just grant it just because it's, we don't want to see it again. We don't have to grant just because we don't want to see it again. Our staff has told us we're good to go to take some votes. Let's just take the vote, see what happens. Perhaps if we're way in the weeds here. No, we aren't. No, we aren't. We are. So, so I was, um, I wouldn't say I was reactive, John, I'd say I was proactive for the simple reason. I did take advice. I took advice from the people that we employ here in the town, and I followed their advice to the letter. And I did that not to be reactive. I did that to respect that there is a process, and that there is code, and that there is a legislative requirement. And I met and changed that drawing and the, the setup of the cafe restaurant for that reason. So I don't know if you'd call that reactive or proactive, but I met code and that's what the changes were. I don't know an architect nor a restaurateur that ever presents a set of drawings to a town and they go approved. Never, never known. This is probably the hundredth build, build out I've done. You know, I've never endured so much um, advice as I have, but I've listened to it. And I've listened to it because I want to get open and my loyal customer base back to me. That's really what I want. You know, the longer I leave it closed and the longer I um, remain not serving good coffee and food, the, the, you know, they go elsewhere. I, I'm not sure that some of these approvals <clears throat> would, they wouldn't give Mr. Dunn the ability to, to be open anyway without some of these other ones that are required. So I, I think there are some things that could be approved and get that piece out of the way, um, which is not giving him a green light to open. It's just doing that piece of it. The entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, it appears that you still need to get the approval from ZBA to hold entertainment mm -hmm. in the downtown. So I would think that until they approve that, that might, that might be premature. But I'm thinking the, the beer and wine um, could be approved. And the common vigiler, from what I understand, again, the Board of Health has approved the actual, what you've got for your facility to serve food, which is what we would be approving tonight. And the, the food, the details on the food, the menu, 
is separate. That would go to the Board of Health, and that's not under mm -hmm. our purview anyway. Mm -hmm. All we're approving is your ability to be a food server, sure. which it appears that the food the structure, the restaurant, the, the uh, refrigerators and sinks and all, mm -hmm. Board of Health said, otherwise the kitchen design as presented meets the minimum requirements of the 2013 food code. Um, so I would put forth that we can approve the common vigiler license um, <coughs> and the beer of wine understanding that a lot of your building issues mm -hmm. are going to be handled separately through the building department. Sure. Yes, they are. And, you know, it will take the state, will have to come out and look at the premises also, and they'll have their recommendations. But without your approval, I can't get the application into the state. So that's really why I'm here tonight for the rear buying license, because I need a sign-off from the town so I can submit the application to state. <clears throat> as long as it, it's understood that when... The <laughs> Everybody understands that their individual application is a standalone and, and, and they have the ability to approve or deny. Um, it's not as if you could take what one board gave you and become sure. licensed to do another thing. You still need each one of those mm -hmm. those pieces. Yeah. Um, I just need to see a locked down floor plan for a liquor license. And that's the thing. If we're giving a conditional <laughs> Floor plan. <laughs> Madam Chair, point of order, please. We're in a public hearing. Can we go to the public and see if we have any input from the public? Is there any input from the public? You're right. I always forget this. Very quiet out there. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to the Board of Select and close the public hearing. Second that. Any discussion on the closing of the public hearing? No. Nope. Okay, so that means we cannot receive more information, but we can discuss amongst ourselves. So, clarification, that does not mean we do, cannot receive more information. That does mean that we cannot receive public input. Public, but we can receive more information from the applicant. Correct. If, if we have a question. That's correct. But we can't get public information. So, That's correct. So, so John, on the 49, um, the building inspector wrote out to me and said, this is what I'm advising you. I called him, we chatted, and he said, I'm going to mark 49 on your drawings, and that's what you stick with. So we did it. I'm sorry, Matt. Sorry. On his advice. So, um, thank you. Okay, so there is a motion to close the public hearing. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. Madam Chair. Mr. Herb. Mr. Kamal, <clears throat> in light of what we've discussed this evening, are you still comfortable that the Board of Selectmen has in front of it three applications that we should consider? Yes, I am. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen <clears throat> approve the common victualler license <clears throat> for What's the leave here? Uh, done. Uh, doing, a, doing businesses. Done. Yes. Olivera done. Olivera done. Um, yeah, bittersweet. Doing business as bittersweet. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the common vigiler license, <clears throat> please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. That is unanimous. <clears throat> if I may. Mr. Her uh, Mr. Kamala, please. I think this point has been made clear to the applicant. Um, you'll still be required to receive the appropriate licenses from the Board of Health mm -hmm. regarding food preparation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request for the um, <coughs> Section 12, Beer and Wine. Section 12, Beer and Wine license as requested by the applicant. Second. Discussion? Madam Chair, we're on the edge of the occupancy of these buildings for both the common victualler of this and the entertainment. 
So to Mr. Catino's point, I'm generally a pain in the backside when it comes to alcohol licenses mm -hmm. and making sure that we enforce <laughs> and make it very clear up front when people receive licenses, we do not mess around. If sure. you serve illegally, we're going to take the license. And that's going to kill your business. Sure. Right? The same would be said about occupancy in this situation. <clears throat> the chief has made it very clear that occupancy is a concern. And so this board takes the input of the chief <clears throat> very closely, <clears throat> very dearly, and we will hold the license sure. holder to that occupancy number as well, which I'm sure it would be spelled out on the licenses, correct, Mr. Kamala? It will. Yes. So, so, so to be clear, alcohol is a dangerous thing if not treated properly. <clears throat> treated properly works well for, you know, it sure. works in terms of business. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, the occupancy is also going to be a very serious matter in whether I'm on the board or whomever in the future years, sure. the board will hold you guys responsible for that. And it's not unfair to do so. And I, I will be responsible about it. I've already uh, turned away uh, people who've looked for bookings for 55 people or 58 people. I've already written back and said I can't do it, I'm afraid. So, you know, I will follow it to the letter. 49 is 49, you know, and that's it. It's going to be a 49er. <laughs> Mr. Okay, the motion for the approval of the beer and wine section 12 license has been made and seconded. Further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. Okay, that is four to one. Correct? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the entertainment license uh, as requested to be held on Wednesday through Saturday evenings from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Before that gets seconded, I, I just a point of clarification. They need to go to the ZBA to get approval to have entertainment in the downtown. Right. So is this premature? I think I did it this way the last time also. I came here first and then went to the DBA. <clears throat> so could we get a second and then we can debate it or a second? So Madam Chair, I understand what you're saying and I agree with you that it might be the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken? I don't fair, know. Is it fair to but the ZBA? The ZBA, if they decide that something else has to change and these folks have to come back to us, with all due respect to them, that's their problem, not ours. Our problem is to move things, our challenge is to move things forward and try and accommodate as best we can. But if they run into a snafu and they have to come back before us on any of these permits that we're issuing, that's their challenge, not ours. You know, I think that if the ZBA says something in their, their, their findings that impacts what we do here and we'll do something again well i agree with you on the idea a lot of these have to go to a different board like the building issue has to be handled <coughs> by the building we're not building we don't do building the food stuff board mm -hmm. health but the entertainment i feel it's inappropriate for us to be given an entertainment license if it turns out that the entertainment is not allowed i, I feel it's odd for us to be asked to issue entertainment until we know that the entertainment is going to be permitted i feel that is but it sounds like there's enough other things going on in this permit that there would be plenty of time to take up the entertainment license when you know that you can have entertainment. But if I may, it's the exact same entertainment schedule and lineup that I submitted and got approval for sure. from the ZBA last year. I would hope that because it's identical that they're not going to have any issues with it. I appreciate the budget list will change slightly. Um, you know. I'm not going to do storytelling and stuff like that. And yeah, no, independent no. film night. It's not going to be like a rock band or anything like that. So. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I would think so too. It just seems a little awkward to be approving something that we don't know if it's an approved <laughs> operation. But that's just me. So are there any uh, are there other comments relative to the issues of the entertainment license? Okay. Hearing none, a motion has been made and seconded to grant the entertainment license to uh, Olivier and Dunn doing business as bittersweet. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, nay. Aye. So it's what, two? Two? Three. three to two. Okay, three yeses and two noes. Okay, all right. As, as soon as the VA says yes, I'll be... I'll, I'll yeah, be I'm with you, John, but... Okay. We want the same thing. <laughs> I just don't want those boards saying... We had to cut them. <clears throat> okay. All right, then we're set. 
All right, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank, thank you. you very much. It's a lot. I'm assuming if something changes radically, we'll hear back from you. Okay. Okay, well, where are we now? We're off. Parcel. Madam Chair, uh, for the next agenda item, I need to recuse myself. Okay. Uh, the possibility of this land uh, being developed in the same uh, world that I live in professionally uh, is real. Uh, so, uh, and I have spoken with these folks about uh, solar on that parcel. Uh, I'm not involved in this parcel right now in any way, shape, or form. I don't expect to be involved in this parcel in any way, shape, or form. But given that it's a possibility that's a solar uh, opportunity, I'm going to recuse myself fully. Okay. Um, Chair. Mr. Nashville has to leave. I do, and I have a similar issue with recusal on the next item. But I was going to ask if we may be able to um, jump ahead to the town meeting yeah. and see if uh, there's one issue that I would like to address while I'm yep. before I go. I think we, we can always touch it and then come back to it. And I think that none it. of these are public hearings. So um, let's hold on Mechanic Street and for just a couple of minutes, Mr. Ness really has um, jumped to town meeting or at least start that discussion. Um, do you want to go right to what you'd like to discuss, Mr. Ness um, Do you have a list of what we're doing? You have a list of the warrants? Ah, uh, um, the, the, the nomenclature of the, the board. Oh, the, the, uh, the, the board, the select persons one? Yes, the select board. Select board. Do we know what page that's on? There's some other citizen petitions. Here it is. Here it is. So he has it. Good job. Yes. Do you all need a moment to take a look at this? Basically, uh, it's it's um, change the board of selectmen to select board in the general bylaws. Right. Where is that, please? Page. Page 19, 19 and 19. 19? Yep. So what are you asking, Ursula? That we consider this one before I leave? Well, so, it's a citizen's petition, so I don't think we were going to be going through no, all this. We weren't going to be going through that? But. Yeah. If we were going through it, and I would like to speak, if we're not going through it, then... Difference right now. Yeah. I don't believe it. Okay. Yeah. Are we not touching this one later on? If we're not touching we're not touching this? If the board has any general question, I think you should let us know then we we can respond at a future meeting. Okay. Because that's the opportunity we always give the board, i.e. here's the draft warrant. Do you have any questions on any of the articles? And if you do, yes. Yes. Let's hear those questions. Okay. So I don't have questions. I just had comments. I wanted to okay. say my piece on it. But if we're if we're not considering it, if we're not talking about it, then we can go about our business. Well, I, only, I have one quick question: Is why don't we try to change the charter first, so that the overarching? It seems like we are we are um, renaming. We're, we're changing the words in the book before we rename it. In six years, the charter yeah. doesn't come up for six oh. more years, right? Is it six years? Is it seven years or ten years? Ten. So it's just nine years. Last year. So it's yes. nine more years. Yeah. So this doesn't come before us for nine more years. But this is a citizen petition, so it's really not up to us up up to us. We can't take it off or put no. it on. <laughs> we can we can speak to it on the floor. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Okay. okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, for entertaining me here. <laughs> We're very entertaining. Take my warrant right back. Quite entertaining. <laughs> okay. Then why don't we go back to staying with the um, rest of the agenda where we were, which would be to discuss the Mechanic Street parcel. 
This would be parcel U6-21-0 Mechanic Street. The Board of Selectmen will review the feedback received from town departments and board committees relative to whether the town may be interested in acquiring the land if it becomes available. So this is the larder, larder property. Um, and I know we had this earlier at a meeting and gave generally positive responses, those of us that were here. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, uh, I sat in a couple of open space meetings, and we at the open space um, decided it really was kind of a no brainer that the town would want to exercise its right of first refusal. It doesn't bind us, but we would want to exercise our right. If the appraisal of this property came in at a, a very, very low amount of money, um, it doesn't make sense why we as a town wouldn't want to acquire this, or potentially acquire this, whereas it's uphill from our watershed and um, it's, it's a, it, it abuts the Fruit Street property. It, it, it's, a, it's a sizable piece of property that would be nice. So it would be nice for the town to keep its option available to exercise its right of first refusal basically all I'm saying. That's what we said at open space. And that's what I say is a slot. Right. Well, I agree. I mean, I read all the all the comments from CONCOM and the various other boards, and they all pretty much was concurred with what we said the first mm -hmm. time, that between, between its proximity to Whitehall Brook and, um, you know, concerns of, of set an area that's not sewered, if that became developed yeah. and they had sewers, we'd be endangering our water supply. Um, I, I think both CONCOM and the water department all felt that it was a valuable piece of land for, for water uh, resource protection, if, if nothing else, not to mention trail connections. And so I didn't see anything in the comments that we received that detracted at all or, or that advised against um, the town continuing to pursue this. Um, Mr. Kamalu, if, is there any stipulation, so say this comes to the town of the right of first refusal because a solar farm's going in there or a pig farm or a whatever, wh whoever's buying a piece of land, say, say they're, they're using it for a piece of property, I mean for, for business designation that's, let's say it's a solar farm where people will look at it and say, you know what, there's no runoff, there's no detriment, none whatsoever. Once that corporation or company buys that piece of property, that or any piece of property in town. And they, so the town, say, say we exercise our right of first refusal, we decide not to buy that. Strictly because we think a solar farm is going to be the least um, environmental impact that, that uh, this, could, this could be. What's to say that the owner of this solar farm puts it up and then six months later comes and says, you know what, this isn't profitable for us. It's not going to be profitable. So rather than put up our solar farm, we're going to put up 60 houses. Once the town loses its right of first refusal once, yeah. that's it. We lose it, right? Correct. And there's no stipulation. We can't say to a solar farm that, that, just, bought, that just got this piece of property, say it's on Whitehall Brook or... or say it's on the top of Peppercorn Hill at Maspinac. There's not, nothing from us that, that a stipulation that once we lose <coughs> first refusal once, that's it, it's gone with us, right? Yeah. Solar farms don't come in with the same tax designation where, where they afford us the right of first refusal. And is there a time period from when someone says they're going to build a solar farm to when they say we're actually going to put 90 houses up? There's no such limit in terms of your last question. Mm -hmm. Um, what I have seen happen in other instances and this all depends on the willingness of the entity intending to purchase I have seen instances where the, the, the party intending to purchase the parcel um, opens up a conversation with the town that may then identify <coughs> Uh, opportunities for the future. I, I have seen other entities do that, but, but other entities simply say we're buying the land and 
you don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So once the town, and 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 just for my clarification, once the number is presented to the town mm -hmm. for the right of first refusal, that has to be the selling price, correct? Correct, depending on, it has to be the number that they are paying. Mm -hmm. It can't just be the number that they show the town. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm not, there's no implication whatsoever that there's that anything which shady would go through. I, I know the larger family inside and out, backwards and front, and they're the some of the most upstanding people in the town, and they have been for generations. Um, I'm just curious. Um, this is a systemic question, not one necessarily related to the larger property. Um, I'm just curious if. Let's say that place on Wilson Street, they decided not to do a solar farm. They got permitted for a solar farm. Now they're going to put houses up. Or, or Hayden Row, or any of the places that are, that are kind of leaning on the people that say green. No matter what, green is good. Green is good. They could get something approved, green, for solar. And then all of a sudden say, yeah, it doesn't fall into, into our business model. So we're actually going to put a uh, whatever up. So there are no stipulations, but to the seller, makes no difference to the seller if if it's the town buys it or a solar farm or a developer or someone that wants to develop plutonium in the in the town. The, the price is the price once it's presented to the town. Yes. Thank you. So, Mr. Catino, do you have any thoughts on Larda property? Uh, I, I think it's if we can if we can get it for a great price, it's awesome. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Do we need a motion on this, or just just a nod? It sounds like the board is all on board that we should continue to pursue purchasing it. Should that? I think we just need a nod. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone from the public that's here that wants to speak to this at all? Sorry, say that again. Is there anyone out here that came up to speak for this? I didn't come to speak, but I actually wrote the letter uh, uh, to Elaine, uh -huh. and I'm from Borrego, so I'll try to come up here if that's easier. Okay. Um, I'm working with the Larders right now on developing a solar project. We're in the very early stages, and as I told um, Elaine, uh, Mrs. Lazarus, we wanted to um, at least get a sense for the town's interest in the Larders property before we you know, really made a push forward with coming to the various commissions and boards to seek our permits. We don't want to waste the town's time. We don't want to waste the larder's time or our own time. So this was simply an informal discussion or intended to be an informal discussion to feel out the town's interest mm -hmm. in this property. Um, I read some of the comments that were made by the various departments. And I think at the time, um, there may have been some questions about what the intended use for the property might be. Um, but again, we're, we're working with the larders for solar development right now. That's, that was all I really had for, for this so evening. We can't really speak for the town. We can speak for our board. For your board, yeah, yeah. exactly. So it would, I would think it would be um, irresponsible as a board to say that the town does not want right of first refusal. What if the appraisal comes in and it's $30,000 for this? Of course we're going to buy it. If the appraisal comes in at 60 million, you know maybe we don't buy it. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not saying that I question your integrity or, or your truthfulness that you're going to develop a solar farm, but we've had a project in town that was presented to us that has not uh, Legacy Farms has not presented the way it, it has not developed the way it was presented to us. Understood. And uh, it's easy for someone to come up and say, I want to put a solar farm. I want to put Absolutely. whatever. So. I think what's interesting about the Larders property um, is also that there's a cell phone tower on it currently. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure what that impact would be um, for the town's ability to purchase the property, but that is something to keep in <coughs> mind that there's currently a, a tenant on the property as a cell phone tower. That sounds like it's something that the seller and the, and the, uh, and the cell tower would have to work <coughs> on. Figure out, yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds to me like, at the end of the day, 
you don't control it unless you own it. That's right. what it comes down Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And regardless of the low impact use or whatever, if the town is concerned about the water resources, the only way to provide permanent long-term protection is the town to own the land. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if we don't own the land, um, you know, we can be hopeful that there's a solar farm, and that would probably be and pretty good for the water. Yeah. But there's no guarantee going forward how long that would last, or that option is always, now it's privately owned, and an owner can do whatever they want. So um, it really doesn't, I mean, it's just the town's decision. If we care enough about yeah. this land and what it represents, then, you know. Yeah, they, I think they have more than one tenant on there. They have a. What's that? I think they have more than one tenant on there. They have the uh, they have a cell phone tower and they there's have a, a cell phone tower, yeah. right? Um, and then I think they have some greenhouse space that's over there. Yeah. Um, but that's easily movable. I don't know how easily you move a cell phone tower. Um, but that's something for them to worry about if that's yeah. what this comes yeah. to. And and you guys um, have been very helpful with your comments this evening. I know that you can't speak for the town, but yeah. it's helpful to hear this this board say um, how they feel about this. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. And, and I don't think a cell phone tower, I mean, it's pretty low impact. It just sits there. Whoever owns the land, you could rent it to the... Yeah, the town could start making money on cell phone towers. Rent it to who owns the tower. Well, the, the, the reason that um, we, we're not actually purchased, or we're not proposing to purchase the property, we're leasing the property, but in Massachusetts, a solar project can't qualify um, for the state solar incentive mm -hmm. if it's on 61A land. Mm -hmm. And so we'd have to take the property out of 61A, which is what then presents the town with the right first uh, refusal. So who would own the property? The would larders would, the still, larders own would still, own it. still own the property and we would just be you leasing from one it. space of the property from them. So they would still be um, operating and doing whatever they continue to do on that property we would just have a carve out of space on their property for the solar farm. So, Ms. Lazarus, this opens another question for me. If if the if it's not changing ownership, it changes use. It also triggers the right of first refusal. Okay. And we could not put a stipulation. So we'd be presented with a package of information, and the, the town could discuss it at that time. Okay. Yep. All right. I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> Thanks, I have one quick question. How much of the land would be taken up yeah. by the solar? I guess that's one of my things. If it's yeah. if it's only a small spot and the rest yeah. of it stays open space. Yep. Well, what's the acreage on the solar? So we have to work with the topography of the land. There's a lot of ledge on the land, but if we're guesstimating here, it's probably about 15 acres of solar panels, and the property must exceed. 30 acres, 35 acres. It's a pretty big parcel. It's split by 495. Um, well, there is actually one piece of it that's split off, uh, but the parcel is, uh, most of it is, I guess that would be the west of yeah, west 495. Of 495. Yeah, so the majority of the parcel is west of 495, and then to your point, there's a little sliver that got cut off that's on the other side of 495. So would that encroach on like the existing greenhouses? Uh, so the existing greenhouses currently in a conceptual design still are still there. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate the time. Have a good evening. All right. So looks like we don't we don't need a motion. We just need to basically instruct the town manager that we would be interested in continuing to investigate the town using threat of first refusal on the larder property. Yes, and also, thankfully, the Poreco representative did hear the town's position tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to tell Brian he can come back, somebody? Brian? Quicker without him. Okay, yes. Budget update. Town manager will update the Board of Selectmen relative to the Board's March 5th vote that the overall FY20 budget tax impact net of new growth be reduced to 2.5%. The Board of Selectmen will also consider finalizing a ballot question at the next election. 
which would reduce the levy limit on a recurring basis for the start of the fiscal year 2021 town budget process and beyond. So, Mr. Kamala made some changes to get it to 2%, I guess. Yeah, in, in fact, um, we did share the gist of the information contained in the March 15th memo mm -hmm. previously with the board. Yep. At that time, what we did not have in place were the specific numbers from our school colleagues. And referring you to the memo uh, that I shared with the board in the packet, the contribution by our school colleagues include the following. Point number two in the memo, reduction in the school wetlands order of condition pay as you go capital project from 100,000 to 40,000. Removal of the $25,000 pay as you go middle school existing space redesign project. As part of this process, we also identified an opportunity to fund the kitchen equipment at 24,200 through the pay-as-you-go capital, as well as providing $26,000 for the special education van. We transferred the 200,000 school security camera installation project from pay-as-you-go to borrowing. And finally, our school colleagues reduced the school operating budget by 15000 one five. I also wanted to share with the board tonight that uh, the appropriations committee review of the budget is progressing well. So far, there are no changes that have been suggested um, or are being recommended to the town manager and the board of selectmen. We're hoping that the Appropriations Committee beginning um, this week will start putting together the Appropriations Committee re report for town meeting. So that's it on the budget. I had just two questions on, on these items that, that reduced it to 2.5. Um, the school wetlands order of conditions, so it was $100,000 basically worth of work that needs to be done. And we're, we'll do forty thousand dollars worth. Basically, we're just dragging out a little longer. Um, could that be a co combination of that as well as um, um, re-engineering the cost of the project. Because that's been hanging out there for a long time. That hundred thousand. Yeah. So, so yeah. we can get some of it done. We'll just pick at it. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. Bit. Combined again with the uh, value engineering the project. Yeah. Um, and the um, removal of the 25000 from the middle school existing space redesign project. I mean, I know that the numbers of kids are coming and they're not, they're aging into the middle school. Um, I'm just wondering what, what does that do to their, I mean, I'm glad you made all the reductions. I'm just wondering what does that do to the middle school planning for their space needs that are that are clearly coming down the road. Um, is that going to be funded differently or do they just, is it a small amount of money out of it that they can still get some of their space redesign? I mean, obviously 25,000 isn't very much, so I'm assuming they, they can still start to be moving ahead. It's just a small amount you took off of that. I'm just concerned about their planning needs. Yeah, my understanding is that they, they identified another avenue of getting to this goal. Okay. So the planning, what they need to do, will go, will go forward anyway. So, Mr. Kamala, um, what do we really reduce it by, and what do we just move to a different pocket? Are you referring to the the two, the two hundred, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it looks like the two hundred thousand we're going to borrow. So does that mean it's going to be a separate line item that we 
vote on at town meeting? So it, it will be a separate article. I, again, I, I thought the, the instruction from the board was very clear that the costs are the costs. Let's find another way of addressing the sources of the budget. And this is what we did instead. Oh, okay. Well, actually, I actually, I, I thought we were going to do some cuts. That's why I didn't realize that we were doing it. But, you it, know, it's, it's, it's in the interpretation. And maybe not just, I don't know, actually, I think it was Mr. Hur's motion. So I'll defer it to him. I think there were several items, <coughs> excuse me, you just mentioned that were removed oh, yeah. from this year's agenda, yeah. if mm -hmm. you will, our program. So those would be, quote, cuts. Mm -hmm. Um, I think moving the two hundred thousand dollars security thing to an article, you know, it'd be nice if we had two hundred grand in cash for that, but we don't. Um, and it's a big enough number that it makes sense to let the voters decide, or the town meeting members decide. So I'm okay with that. But I did see, I did hear some cuts. I did hear some yeah. shaving back on cutting back on a couple of things. Yeah. In, in fact, to answer that question directly, um, yes, two hundred thousand was moved over to borrowing, and there was eighty-seven thousand dollars in cuts. Okay. Yeah, it just it, and it's good to Mr. Hurst's point. It's 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 good that the that the um, uh, town meeting gets to gets to vote on some of these bigger things, and if, rather than us just uh, uh, giving a blanket approval. So, uh, good job, Mr. Mr. Kamala. So we're still at the two point five net of new growth. Correct. Plus new growth, plus whatever the number is on the underwrite. In terms of different topics, right? I get it. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, and has that number changed substantially in the last two weeks on the excess levy to clear? Mm, no, that number has not changed. Um, it's still the number. What are you that, Yeah, that was approved by the board. Okay. 180. 187, I think it was. Okay. I mean, you know, my concern still going forward is, and I know we voted for this, I, I would have been more comfortable if we took a, shaved off a big piece of that <coughs> that we didn't wipe the slate completely clean. Uh, in our budget every year, we have been very grateful for the new growth, because the new growth has really held up a piece of the budget. And we know that the predictions have been for, and are bearing out that the new growth is going downwards rather than upwards so um, you know we can't expect that next year we're going to have that same level to fill in the gaps so I'm just saying I'm worried about the about the traje trajectory and wiping out every last last red cent of excess levy but it is what it is if I may through the chair um, relating the budget process to the annual town meeting warrant, uh, you will notice that we are suggesting two ballot questions. And the first ballot question is the one regarding the underwrite. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is asking if the town shall allow to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2.5 um, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued uh, for the purchase of the ladder truck for the fire department. In other words, the 1.2, um, if, if the board and town meeting are inclined to move that forward, that, um, that be funded um, outside the, the levy. So that's going to be a ballot question as well? It's our suggestion. The reason being, um, this may be the last opportunity for the board to set the ballot questions. I don't see that published here. I see the I see the underride. Yeah. What it's page on, is that? Yeah, it's on page two. Oh, Are you looking at the oh sorry. No. Uh, Chairman, you're looking at the version that we reviewed in my office. Oh. <laughs> okay. Not dated, ah, thank you. That explains it. So well this is right, opening that. Can you walk me through that again? There's okay. something that sounds a little odd there to me. Yeah. Um, based on past practice, um, the board 
has moved forward items that are above one million dollars as excluded debt. Yeah. In other words, comes on the roll, paid out, comes off the tax levy. Yeah. That's that's the suggestion. And how much is this truck? It's one point two million. Are there other questions or comments on the budget as presented? And we'll move to the ballot questions. So, and this is the ladder truck? This Correct. Is, okay. So, one of the questions I brought up last time was the amount of money that we were getting. And this number is inclusive of the trade. And I think that one of my thoughts, and I don't know if this is appropriate for me to say here, if we for town meeting, that for the amount of money that, that these places give us for trades, it would be more beneficial for us to have a backup ladder truck for sixty thousand bucks than to get rid of it. You know, I think we're selling we're selling a dollar for fifty cents on the trade. Um, you know, if if it's one point one eight million. And the town's gonna. I, I would much rather it be um, 1.18628. If I may, you, may. Um, you raise a very good point, Mr. Tedstone. Uh, ben Sweeney, our grant and procurement manager, has advised us that at times it's best if we actually try and auction our cars versus giving them in as uh, our trade in cars yep. uh, that we get more uh, uh, clearly the, there is a market for fire trucks uh, both public and private uh, however I think given some of the of the limitations that the chief has identified and discussed regarding this particular vehicle it may be tough finding a buyer, but however, I want to point out that you raise a good point, and uh, Ben Sweeney has actually been advising us to uh, look towards uh, auctioning some of our cars versus trading them in. Mm -hmm. well, so, I'm, not, I'm saying, I guess you could, you could auction it with maybe putting a, a minimum bid, but if we if we were going to get sixty thousand dollars for this truck, and it's, I believe it's in good working condition. Um, I don't know. I believe I, I don't know. Like I know bucket trucks have to be recertified every couple of years, and they have to be structurally sound. And I'm hoping that our ladder truck is. But I would much rather, for sixty thousand dollars, have a backup piece of machi machinery. And I know we we're going to run into a problem with housing because. Our fire station can't house it as it is, but um, you know, there's a good chance I could probably find some place to put it. Uh, Eighty legally. south, yeah, Eighty south. south. You're, you're sure. wherever. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody could could house it, and, and I would much rather have it be a backup piece of equipment or utilize it as a as a second ladder truck than to throw away hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. Um, but and. You know, the fire chief knows this inside and out. Uh, I, I would hate to step on his toes where I, I have not discussed this with him. Uh, but if, if I'm off base, then by all means let me know I'm off base. But if it's something that we could be advantageous, I just want to see the chief get up. He looks like he's a little sore. I believe he, I believe he did some guard work recently. Yeah, and through the chair, I just want to uh, uh, chime in on this one also. You know, with, with thinking about it, you know, we've been talking about a, a second fire station for the last five years, ever since the, uh, um, the Ashland... Uh, Combination and and the reports that came out of there that we need a second fire station, and if we if we sell this one or get rid of it for sixty thousand, then we have to outfit the new station, well, and we have, to, we have to buy a new one, and it's uh, you know two thirty or two fifty for another used one. It's like oh, why did we save it? You make a great point. It's not, it's not like it's a perfect decision here. Um, my gut tells me I've evaluated a lot. Um, I just spent $12,000 this year on maintenance. It's a beautiful ladder truck. It's 20 years old, though. And um, it's unique. Just to 
get some of the parts. We literally probably got the last spring bushings, according to spring rebuilders, on this trip yesterday. For the and it's so weighing all that out, where we may be staffing levels, having the extra piece of equipment on a city like Framingham, it makes sense to have a spare ladder truck with the amount of for for us right now. My gut says it's not right, and I think that's a pretty quality ladder truck. Um, but at my, I, I just, it's not a perfect decision, but I just think looking at the model that we have, um, trying to s stretch it out five years when we may have two stations and, and, and we may have somebody tell us what's run a quint from each station. There's communities that do that in, in bigger communities. But then that life truck will have gone past. There will be certain certifications you'll have to do that will be so expensive that it's not worth doing. So that's what my gut tells me. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. I, I rescind my uh, my suggestion that we hold off on it. Then. Me too. On a lighter note, we, we, we did joke about whether we could convert it to a bucket truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, something for the trails. <laughs> yeah. Compaction. So thank you, Chief, for clarifying that. That was yes. that was uh, me being a, someone who plays selectman four hours a night, twice a month, going up against someone who actually does that for a living. So thank you very much. Okay. I love trucks. I can tell. That's obvious. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Shall we move to the ballot questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kamala, do we need to vote these independently or uh, together? Oh. Okay. I still have one question. So there's the, there would only be two right now on the on the ballot. Yes. You know, in, in the um, off chance, hypothetically, that that the town ends up purchasing some land for some other use, would we need a ballot question on there to 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 do the borrowing to buy such a parcel? That's a that's a good point. Um, should we put a placeholder in there, or do we have to put a dollar, dollar amount in? We do not need to specify a dollar amount. Putting ballot question yeah. number three, blank. Yeah, ballot question number three, shall the town of Hopkinton be, be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to acquire land for parking next to town hall? I'd know we had to be so specific. Okay, that does. I didn't know we could say that out loud outside of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking hypothetically. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Do you want to make you company? I just say uh, 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 through the chair. I just yeah, we have enough. 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 We can we put a placeholder in? That's all I was asking. If, uh, in the off chance that something happens. Thank you. So no, 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 no. So shall we vote these? Um, Tim? No, he's right. Um, Do them one at a time, didn't we? Yeah, I want to ask him if he wants us to do it one at a time. Or... I got some chips to eat. <laughs> Let's go to commercial break here. <laughs> Dried apple chips. They're very healthy. So. Shall we both ballot questions one at a time or can we do them in a group? What do you prefer, Mr. Kamala? I think we 
if, if the board is so inclined, you could move a motion uh, directing the town manager to forward the following three ballot questions to the town clerk's office. Uh, question number one. Shall the town of Hopkinton be required to reduce the amount of real estate and personal property taxes to be assessed for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 by an amount equal to 1,180,568? Question two. Shall the town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase a ladder truck for the fire department. Question three. Shall the town of Hopkinton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and one half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase land for parking in the downtown or next to town hall? All right. The motion has. Um, would someone like to um, put that motion forward? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? So, if we do a. When, when's the last day that we can pull any one of these off? At this point, I don't believe the town will or the board will have the ability to pull any one of these off. Instead, the board could move a motion at town meeting to take no action if there's, if there's an associated article Got with it. the question. Yep. However, as we have learned in the past, the state takes elections seriously. If you say the ballot question, it will be on the ballot. <laughs> but if it doesn't pass a town meeting, then it doesn't matter at the ballot. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so these three ballot questions, which are just the motion's been made and seconded, we vote these. These are, these are going to be set on the ballot. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, that is unanimous. Okay. All right. 2019 Annual Town Meeting. The Board of Selectmen will review the final Annual Town Meeting Warrant. We will review draft motions for Board of Selectmen review and will take positions on Annual Town Meeting Warrant articles. So... But my understanding was this is a still a review. Yep. It doesn't get signed until... Next meeting. Yes, until the 23rd. Correct. So this is just for us. Anything that's come up from our last meeting to now, this is something that we would come up and, and discuss. Yes, and also if there's anything else that you believe that you believe is important for the board to discuss uh, regarding any one of these articles, it's, it's a pretty long list. Yeah. I read through it. So, um, was Mr. Mazzarulo's question about the citizen petition article, were we, I think he was looking to see if we would take a position on that, but I didn't know that we would take positions on citizen's articles, or? Page 18, was it? Yeah, he was specifically interested in the general bylaw change. Right. Typically the moderator will come to the Board of Selectmen and ask for our uh, position on articles that we have a purview to, at this level, weigh in on. Right. Um, the citizen petition would not be one of those no. articles. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of the articles we would not weigh in on. Right. Um, only those that are sponsored by us, or we have an obligation through the charter to weigh in on. Yeah. How many of those are there? Uh, we haven't counted those yet. Um, we, we do, as of this afternoon, have a draft the first draft of the motions document. But in answer to your question, we have not counted how many. So should we flip through this and look at the ones that have our name on it or have some, uh, we have some purview over and, and see if we want to take positions or are there any? Yeah, they, they're through the chair. Yeah. I can go through the list. There are traditional articles where the board on which the board can take action tonight. For example, acceptance of town reports. 
Okay. So moved. Well, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Board recommends approval. Okay. And then. Well, we'll take a vote. All right. Which one? Um, which, which one two articles is will it acceptance will, of town reports. Will be article one acceptance oh, okay. of town reports. Okay, move to it. Move to uh, what are we moving to? Support. Yeah, recommend. Move to recommend. Okay. Yeah. So do we have to do these one by one? Or well, the ones he's going to pick out. Okay, so motion to accept town reports. I have to take a motion and a second on that? Yep, that's both. We, we got okay. the motion on the second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, town reports. Yeah. Um, the supplemental appropriations, we're still working through the motion for this one, so Not yet. put a hold on that. Okay, unpaid bills. And then the next one, unpaid bills from prior years. I understand as of today there's one bill that has shown up and it's from, or oh, it's three? Three from Park and Rec. Yeah, three from Park and Rec. Um, do we have the amount? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Are they big no. dollars? Oh, in, in no, fact, $3, what I'm looking at right now is uh, 2206 Water irrigation specialist. Is that it? Yeah. I, I only saw one amount. He says they're like three. Th yeah. Three thousand total. But they're not big dollars, any of them. Yeah, they're not no. big dollars. Madam Chair, I'm moving okay. for a second support the bills being paid for this year. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, what are the amounts? I just want to confirm that these are not big amounts. No. Oh, it's it's 384 for one, 1254 for the second one, the third one is 568. Oh, so then that adds up to 2,026. Okay. 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 Yeah. So we're right. good. So we, we support that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then the traditional property, personal property tax exemption uh, relatives to chapter 59, sections 5, clauses 17D, 22, 22A, 22B, 22C, 22D, 22E, 37A, 41C, 42, or 43. It's all the tax relief stuff. Yeah. <coughs> Move to approve the per personal property tax exemption increase. Second. Or recommend. Yeah. Okay. Made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. And then the Brave Act. My understanding is that tonight the Board of Assessors met to review the warrant articles are relating to the Brave Act. Um, with regard to increasing in abatement by amount not to exceed the cost of living, the suggestion is that the increase in abatement by amount not to exceed the cost of living, that there be a change in the sponsorship. The Board of Assessors are in favor. Uh, they want to co-sponsor this with the Chief Financial Officer. And not the Town Manager? Yeah, I think I think we will we will have them co-sponsor this with the chief financial officer. Okay, so it'll be CFO and board of assessors, not town manager. Does that take any of the leverage away from the board on that? Because it's important for me that we as a board keep our fingers on the our, on the pulse of this yeah. stuff for the seniors. Exactly. No, no, it doesn't. It, he, here's why. Um, we would be happy to have the Board of Assessors be the sole sponsor. However, because this, the deadline for submitting articles uh, was way back in, in February, um, and we're way past that deadline now, so we need to, for the record, uh, and we need to confirm to the public that this was sponsored uh, by the finance director and the town manager prior to 
the Board of Assessors endorsing it, which was tonight. So this is simply just a, a Scribner's thing, just changing things up. We're still going to be overseeing that. Exactly. The Board of Assessors working aside, alongside the Board of Selectmen. Yep. Uh, so or these brave back. Yes. Approaches. Yes. But we don't have to vote to support it then because it's not coming from us, or do we? I think it's important that the Selectmen uh, okay. All right. take action on this. Motion the, to Yes. The Board of Assessors also suggested that we eliminate the last clause, namely, and to establish the amount of the increase for all fiscal years. The idea here being that <coughs> the purpose of the provision is to allow for variable annual decisions on the increase up to the amount of the CPI, not to set the amount for all future years. So that last and to establish is deleted? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I move that we approve or recommend the four Brave Acts uh, articles, including the change removing that language. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just for the record, the, there is also a change suggested to the next one, um, um, replacing the phrase which exempts from taxation uh, with the word for. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. okay. Which exempts from taxation yeah. for, for real estate tax. Exactly. That is and, in my motion. Exactly. And then the last change, the following um, article, uh, adding the following clause to the end of the first sentence, up to 1,500 in tax reduction. Subject to residency requirements up to $1,000? $1, 1,500 in tax reduction. That's in my motion. Yep. And it's in my second. In tax exemption. Okay. Um, I think Mr. Hur's motion approved, was to approve all four. Yeah. So we've done those four. Okay. Four all four. <coughs> Negative. Okay. I'm looking for corner. Where is corner? <laughs> oh, he left. Okay. The next one is setting the salary of an elected official. Again, as as the board has learned over the years, we don't really have a specific process for this. So this year, the town manager is sponsoring this article. That was nice of you. Yeah. Need to recommend. Yeah. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh. There is a little one. Yeah. Operating okay. budget. Ooh. This, is, this is a quickie. <laughs> no, this is a two town meeting in 30 seconds. Yeah. Operating <laughs> budget, let's hold off until the appropriations committee uh, completes its uh, public hearing process. Okay, so leave that open for now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Again, number, uh, the next one regarding uh, spending limits for the FY 2020 revolving funds. I'm sorry, Mr. Kamal, if we get back up for a sec. Yeah. Um, the article in the operating budget has a uh, second item in included in the article saying, support is a non-binding resolution and affirmative vote on the ballot. Question to reduce the amount of the override. In other words, the underwrite. Yep. Um, or the excess levy, the underwrite. Yep. So, is there not a separate article for the underwrite as well? Uh, there is no separate article. Um, as we dis yeah, you may not have been at the meeting. As we discussed, um, a voted town meeting is not required. Uh, however, based on past practice, um, the board needed to find a way to allow town meeting to discuss the concept. It's a non-binding resolution. The reason why this is added to the budget article is because uh, we did not place a placeholder before February 6th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> if we had a placeholder, it would have been a separate article. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, revolving fund. Yeah, revolving fund setting the spending limits for uh, FY20. Uh, so far, we have not received any indication that they'll be changing the amounts from last year. Do you want an approval or recommendation? Please. Um, please. Move to recommend. Second. Yeah. Oh, you got it. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. yeah, the next one is setting an enterprise fund for PEG access. As we have explained before, this, this is in response to a <coughs> change in the state law. Uh, we're now required to place the PEG access enterprise Pick access funds in an enterprise fund. Could we could we do this perhaps when we get to the next article? Say whether you want a recommendation or not, and then tell us about it. Because if we don't want a recommendation, we don't really just spend time tonight talking. Okay. About it. So you want a recommendation on this one? Yes, I do. Move to approve. Sorry. Recommend. Sorry. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 And then chapter ninety highway funds, and I need a board of selectmen recommendation. Move to recommend. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> this is a good one. Yeah, need a, a recommendation. Um. <laughs> you said there were a few. We're doing awful. <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I'm saying perhaps we could get to 9.30. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> recommend. <laughs> recommend. Yeah. Is that a motion to recommend? What are we on here? Yeah, transfer to the general stabilization fund, transferring two hundred and eight thousand. Do you want based one? On the budget? Yes, please. Move to recommend. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Opposed. Yes. And then establishing the school department stabilization funds. We're still discussing this issue, so we hold. And then transferring uh, four hundred thousand dollars to the post employment benefits. Need a recommendation. Move to recommend. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'm sorry, quick discussion oh, on that. Oh, so that oh, transfer to other OPEB, um, that's 400 grand. Yeah. That 400 grand is allotted for in the budget itself, the operating budget, correct? Correct. So correct. this is not an additional 400 grand from somewhere else? No, in fact, this is funded through free cash. Even better. So why do we have to have a separate article then for that? Why can't we just do that in the operating budget itself? Um, I believe it's required by law. Move to recommend. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think this is a good point to pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aye. Okay. So that's enough for now on that. And in your town meeting warrant. So town manager's report. Oh, um, since this concerns me, Mr. Ted Stone, do you want to take over on um, vice chair on the town manager report about reappointments? I'm going to be honest, I don't, but I will. Just read it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, town manager report. The town manager reappointments Claire B. Wright as town of Hopkins representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and Elaine C. Lazarus as alternate representative for three year terms to expire on April 9, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, discussion. Discussion. <laughs> All in, can you interrupt it? All in favor of having a discussion? Yeah, yeah, guys, nice try. <laughs> I was going to say, that's what I do. Uh, Mrs. Wright, are you good with this? I am. Yeah. All the same, thank you. Oh, he has no choice. <laughs> Through the vice chair, yeah, please. Denied. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Anna carries. Back to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have liaison, that's all there is on town manager's report, I guess. Um, liaison reports. Anyone have anything to report? I got a whole bunch. Okay. Write them down. Not Send them for stuff with the, uh, you know, the, we've just had a great week with the um, uh, BAA and the, and the marathon, putting up the banners uh, last week. Um, today working with, uh, I just want to thank, um, 
uh, under pressure and not Mercer for doing all the work on the on the Carmen cleaning up all the monuments. Uh, I had some pictures I was showing showing everybody earlier. Actually, to give out to the show you everybody is uh, you know some of the pictures of some of the things that that, that happened um, from the past years. Now, I'm sorry, there's no just here, but I said for everybody. I had to Jack Brennan brought pictures of his either project and forgot to ask him. For yeah. Yeah. Are these, these are doubles, right? Yeah, these are doubles. Just doubles. Okay. Yeah. Well, sorry, John. Just, just, just wanted, wanted you guys to see the, the, the work. I know Mr. Cavallo is keeping up with it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lazarus. No, there's two. There's two. And then I'll explain the second one here also. Uh, you know, this just, it just goes to show some of the, uh, the, the, the community engagement. You know, this is the stuff that we love when people get involved and they, and, and they give back to the, uh, to the town. You know, and what a great job. And I just really want to thank uh, uh, Mark Moser from, from Under Pressure for, for really doing a great job. Um, you know, if now people can get out there and actually see, see the work uh, at, uh, you know, on the gazebo oh, the and, the, and the... The, the difference is that some of these pictures, you know, of, of uh, the stark, stark contrast, of, uh, especially on the, uh, wow. the World War II wow. memorial. You don't realize it until you see the difference. You look at it, it doesn't look that up. bad, right. you know. Yeah, they're all just brightened up. Um, you know, then yesterday we had the, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when, when the, the, the uh, BA was in, the laying down of the three lines for the first mile. And, uh, you know, that it's just, uh, again, it's, 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 it's spreading out the, the one day so that uh, people can see Hopkinton for, for, for its beauty and not just with 100,000 people on the, uh, on the common. The other great thing that happened today, I got some empty samples here for everybody. And to, to, yes, today, and today was the, for 20, the, the um, Start line did a did a, a, a can for the 26.2 celebrating celebrating the marathon. These are all empties. I just wanted everybody to see what the. So that would explain. <laughs> <laughs> actually, went, no, I actually went to the canning process today to, um, to see. Actually, I, I gave up. I gave up uh, beer for Lent, so I didn't drink any. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but it was just you know, we, we, you know another thing that you know it, it's it's highlighting Hopkinton, and that's just that's just the, you know the one thing is just you know you know putting Hopkinton in a great light. It, you know talks about the international the, the international marathon center and, and Hopkinton and start line. The other thing was that the twenty six point two foundation sent over some oh, some cups, oh, sent right, over some cups nice. for the. Uh, for the board and for the, uh, for, the, for everybody else. We should use these instead of these. For the record, these are not exceeding $50, correct? Because <laughs> there are just people out there that love to see stuff like this and say, those are worth more than $50 and give a jingle to the ethics commission. Rubber, rubber cups. And they, they, they just want to send some over there. Again, no, this is, this is you know, the 26.2 Foundation, or what used to be the Hopkin Athletic Association, you know, working together with with the uh, with a local uh, company, start line, you know, and then you know, coming up next week, we've got the, the spectacular coming up. You know, there's just it's just a, a great time to be uh, to be in Hopkinton and working with Hopkinton. And, and again, I want to thank thank the board for making me the uh, liaison to the BAA because I'm I'm really, really having a great time um, bringing the uh, the spirit into it and enjoying it. You're doing a great job with it, John. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And your blue line painting yesterday. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was a heck of a lot of fun, even in the rain and everything. But I really got to thank, I got to thank the, the, the fire chief for bringing the tent and also um, uh, John Westerling from the DPW. He also brought a tent over. Otherwise, it, it really would have been a tough thing to do. Was it windy? It was raining. It was windy, too. He was the like, up. tent. I'm sure that would had something to do with the wind and not st something stuck with your 80s style. Um, so I was a little surprised to see Mr. Catino up in the bucket truck. I'm not convinced he has a lift license. And I, have, I, I do have a two way. Yes, I do. I'd like you to produce it at the next meeting. Okay, I will. Absolutely. Yes. Hey, come on, I'm, all, I'm, I'm still all right. I love trucks. Yep. And trash and trees. <laughs> I love trucks. And drones. Drones. Oh, we don't have one yet. 
All right. I'm How done. Anybody else? Reports? Comments? We have lost it. All right. Well, I just want to say just a couple quick things, and I will add to what uh, Mr. Coutinho just said about Mark Mercer. Give a shout out to him. He is just a great community servant. And two years ago, two Memorial Days ago, when we did a cleaning on Memorial Day of veteran stones mm -hmm. at Mount Auburn, and it was a really gray, wet, cold day, and I was thinking of canceling it and postponing to the next week, except all these wonderful citizens with their buckets and their rubber gloves and their raincoats started showing up all ready to go, and, and then here came Mark Mercer with his power wash equipment, and so between Mark's work and the work of the volunteers on that day, we cleaned every single veteran stone at Mount Auburn prior to 1900 because of Mark's Mark's commitment and they all got dignified and clean beautiful looking again so he he does a great job um, just real quick MAPC because I have actually gone to the meetings um, and both Elaine and I went a couple weeks ago to the swap which is the local group the southwest it, it, it's our southwest region um, they had a legislative session, brought in some of our legislators to talk about things they're doing on, on Beacon Hill, and there was a real good free-ranging discussion about, um, about transportation, about education, about housing issues, um, and I was glad to hear other communities as well bring up the issues that um, I have been sometimes concerned that MAPC has a very has a focus on a particular agenda which doesn't always listen to the communities that it's fine to promote the housing and all but then we end up with the ongoing costs and effects which I mean we understand it's a necessary thing but that needs to be addressed as well and it was it was an interesting discussion here other communities as well um, kind of give a little perspective about the effects of some of this growth that is being pushed by some of these organizations. So anyway, it, it's a useful group. Um, I think it's sometimes also useful to have somebody who expresses a different view than is sometimes out there. I don't know. Um, I also just wanted to mention we had Jack Brennan here in the last couple weeks. I've been to Eagle Scout Court of Honor for three Eagle Scouts, Jordan Hanna, um, Austin Marks and Jack Brennan. So it's and John was with me at, at uh, the one the other Sunday. So it's just amazing what we what our kids what our kids are doing with their leadership, and uh, and I also just want to say thank you to the school department, which throughout the year for the budget process we've met at least once once a month with them and uh, with appropriations where we could to try to work on this budget and get it to where it is. And I think we can all be grateful that we've had a generally much different, smoother. Um, budget process this year than in previous years so credit goes to the whole team that's worked on that and that's about it anybody else okay in that case motion to adjourn. I would entertain motion to adjourn is there a second? second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. Yes. See you later. thank you